Hello and welcome everyone to the Paladins Premier League. And this week we're starting off with a doozy. The very first matchup that we have coming for you this Thursday is going to be Kanga versus Space Station Gaming. My name is Gormizer and joining me on the desk for this set is going to be Evan Rainday Rainer. Hello, sir. And I am ridiculously excited to see this because I believe this is the first time these two have met each other in the Premier League since SSG came in a little late. And because of that, this could be huge either way. Like it, It's really kind of telling. I think SSG out of history is maybe the favorite, but... Kanga have been a force to be reckoned with. They have been. I thought you were going to say you're ridiculously handsome because you are looking pretty nice well, I, in the all pink well, vest. I mean, you know, Gormizer's got it going we'll on. We all knew that. It's not a secret. At this point, though, I mean, <laughs> I'm excited as well for the matchup score. And, and at this point, we have to yeah. wonder what is happening in the inner workings of these teams, these coaches. Yeah. We've, we've heard about a couple of players maybe not feeling too well. Obviously, it's their first matchup. They haven't had any prior experience sure. with one another. So a lot to find out today. And there was a, a big one, I mean, mainly because like when you look at the coaches specifically, Hades always gives us the patented Hades wink always. when he walks by the caster booth. And then it's kind of the whenever they lose a game. But, you know, he's used to it. And then we go and look at some of the players that Baby he's brother. running with. And you have to go look at Joel's. And I think this is actually kind of the highlight of this matchup. There's two players, three players really, I think on Kanga versus three players, I think on SSG that are going to define this set. And Joel's is one of those players on the side of Kanga who has been kind of flexing around with Rhino. Like they haven't really defined themselves as what we normally have, which is point tank and then off tank. Like Joel's will sometimes be the off tank, sometimes yeah. he's on the NR. Like, they will trade up whenever they need to. Kenga have very experienced players, been to a lot of lands. Obviously, Joel's, for those who don't know, is Hayes' younger brother. They Hayes used to be on Kenga beforehand, and Joel's used to play DPS. Hayes taking the role that he kind of Joel's plays now. So they kind of almost, he passed it down uh, in the family patriarchy, family so to speak. And uh, this has been Joel's kind of bread and butter lately, and he's allowed Chronix to flex into the DPS roles. Obviously, picking up Evil Eye meant that they had the other flexibility in that role from the blaster position. But he still brings a very uh, persistent and I think threatening pace on a front line. Very much like the Sadox, the, the, the Diggies, you yeah. know, they, they push the envelope. So if he can do that, um, they will be in a good spot, but it's just consistency. Like you said, sometimes they flip-flop and it, it doesn't look as good as it can. It's kind of interesting because as, as of right now, they're the only team I think I know of that does that with their front lines. That They just like lazy on Navi is always going to be playing point. You never have him going off onto something. Like he might be on champions. something more aggressive, but he is always going to be kind of your point tank player. And because of that, I think you're going to find yourself in an awkward scenario. Another player I think that's going to be big, because he's matching up against Freeze God yeah. most of the time, is going to be Evil Eye here. Yeah, and, and just to finish on that point, the champions they play with Rhino and Joel sometimes switches. Rhino will play yeah. the Ash, and then he'll play the Con for no reason when the Ash is available and Joel's is playing the Ash. This is what we saw in, in a similar match. So we're, we're curious why that is, trying to figure that out. A guy that can alleviate some of those questions and the pressure around it is Evil Eye, as you've seen. Huge impact when he's doing the things that he always can do. But his thing has always been consistency. He's one of the peak potential performers. He's one of the highest ceilings in the world. He has had some of the most amazing games we've seen. 30 killing blows on Zen on Ascension Peak. Things that we don't see often, but he doesn't do it all the time. He's a very happy-go-lucky guy. He's got a lot going on in life. Baby on the way. White, newly married, newly moved. Uh, but he yeah. has to show up big today. Otherwise, Kango won't have a chance uh, against this squad. Well, one of the things I think was very important in that Evil Eye highlight and something that's very important about Kanga's Warder's Gate is like their map. So I expect to maybe it's, see it's that one band away because they were even able to take Envy down on that map last week, 4-2. So be, keep your eyes open, I guess, for that one. But at this point, we're kind of looking at what's going on with the front lines, what's going on with the blasters. The best way to go down is to, well, just talk to the coach. Hades is standing by for an interview ready right now. Thank you so much, guys. We are down here, of course, in one of my favorite booths with Young Rue and, of course, Hayden Shields himself, the man in charge of Kanga. Now, you guys uh, you guys got off to a slow start this phase, but I think you're starting to pick it up. Uh, I think the talk around kind of town is that you guys are a team that is kind of scary at this point. SSG have come out of the gate very hot, and I think they have had those synergies and stuff build up. What are your expectations against this squad today? Yeah, they're one of the ones we've versed the least. So, I mean, we know the least about them and in turn they know the least about us. But I think that's a slight advantage for us because we've been practicing getting better and better every week, as you can see by the results. So, yeah. I think they're going to be more scared of us than we are of them right now. Do you have any particular champions you want to attack this team on? Anything you think they're uh, um, sort of exceptionally weak at? Um, they're one of the teams that focus Ruckus a bit more than the others. So that hasn't been working for a lot of the other teams who are scrimming, so we'll see how that works for them. 
All right, man. Well, good luck in the games today, and I wish you the best. Let's get it back to the desk and keep it moving. Hates couldn't have set that up any better for us. Ruckus and the first player that we're going to talk about when we switch our sights to SSG is going to be Sadak. So yeah. it's literally the, the one guy. And we've seen him flex around. He'll play the Khan. He'll play the Alice. But it feels like Ruckus is at home for Sadak, and it feels kind of like Sadak. Yeah. And even the rest of SSG at this point kind of rely on that. It's something that was, I guess, kind of an old meta that has carried over and transitioned into something that they still try to bring in their style. When comparing metas, Ruckus actually fills the role of Khan. Uh, to be honest, even yeah. though he's not a point tank the way Khan can kind of buy that with his immunity and with his shield, Ruckus brings a damage that's comparable to a DPS, which is very much what Khan does here. That's why you'll see so much of a focus on the Khan or the Genos in the ban phase. If Ruckus can actually be a Khan, what we've seen, though, is Ruckus dies a lot more yeah. than Khan does. He's a lot more susceptible, so people have avoided it. If Sadak and these guys really do incorporate a Ruckus, if he can min-max his movements in a way that truly does allow them to have, okay, we can get this con or we can prioritize an atlas we can have a ruckus we can have that like still aggro tank style that's something that's going to be really hard to ban out and it's going to open up the evs out of the ban phase uh if they have to start banning ruckus and that only helps freeze god and this is where things get really weird because normally it's like okay you have one off tank versus another off tank like mm -hmm. yeah we're going to see con atlas bans a lot normally but yeah. this is the weird spot where three players in this match are going to have over like because rhino will also put his name in that like i don't think i've seen rhino play the atlas but he doesn't have any problems picking up the con he doesn't yeah. have any problems playing the ashley they don't mind swapping that around on the side of kanga which i think is going to cause some interesting drafts overall against ssg but like you said things are going to potentially be opening up like the evs either for evil eye or freeze god which has been game changing in a lot of these scenarios and because of the way this has been going and because of the fact that i mean you're looking at two maybe super aggressive players, maybe three super aggressive players that are coming down in these front lines, I think we're going to see a different style of Paladins than we're kind of used to. It's not going to be as objective controlled as, like, say, when you're watching Na'Vi. Yeah. And might just be kind of brawly. Now, when you talk about brawling, it's interesting because there are a few teams that allow themselves to do that better than others. I think Navi are in there um, because I trust Lazy to be on a DPS or an aggro tank the same way I trust him to be on a point tank. I think Bonker and Diggy, Bonker can be point tank the way. I think Tolki uh, can actually do this well. We've seen him play Khan, although he's typically a point tank. Yeah. Rachao has struggled on the con. He's got to get a comfortable way to play the Atlas, to play the con. Otherwise, it severely hurts their their predictability. They become so obvious how they're picking and banning because they have to have him on the Barrack or the Inara. If he can truly put together a great con performance, it helps SSG so much. Oh, it just yeah. opens up the draft. So that's what I'm trying to figure out if they can actually pull that off. Alleviates a lot of pressure if he's able to come through, but this is more of what you're probably going to see. He's either on the Barrack or on the Inara, Bread and butter. which is not not something that's too outlandish. I mean, I I know all the Navi guys. Almost every time I'm in their booth, are ripping on Lazy for only having two champions in his, yeah. <laughs> in his yeah, champion yeah, yeah, pool yeah. because it's just like, what do you play on point? You play Anara, or if you don't get her, you get Barrack. Yeah. Usually, you actually swap those. Barrack's been high priority lately, Absolutely. so we we'll have to see because Rachel is actually one of the players who has been putting up, I think, some of the largest numbers on Barrack in the past with no Genos Luminary, no boost to him. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how he does it. But we're gonna have to jump down to see how SSG are feeling, how the team is feeling, because we have. I've heard maybe a little bit of sickness in the booth right now. So let's go down to Kresnik and see what he has to say about today. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Kresnik, the uh, SSG social media team, as per usual, on point with their pre-game uh, video today. This one, though, a little, little violent. I don't know. Do you sanction this? Is this foreshadowing for what we can expect today? I don't know about the regulations in Australia about hunting kangaroos, but uh, I, I really hope they looked it up before they posted that because we might be in some legal trouble, I'll be honest. <laughs> Well, guys, I, I think in all seriousness, you've uh, you, you've shaped yourselves as one of the, the top teams in this league, someone uh, everybody kind of comes to respect. What are your expectations out of Kanga today, and uh, what sort of level do you expect them to be able to compete with you at? I mean, Kanga's going to perform very well, I think. I mean, they're a team that kind of blew people's expectations out of the water when the season started, I would say. I mean, people were expecting them to be, like, bottom half. But, I mean, they showed, I mean, even last week against Envy, I think the performance is really good. Uh, I expect a strong team today, and I think we should have a really good game. Okay, so for SSG, where, where do you expect this team to end up? Because we are sort of getting towards the back half of this phase now. Top six goes to MSI, but I think a, a lot of conversation is around you guys' top three. Where do you see yourselves? Uh, 
ideally, I think we, we'd like to be around that area. You know, our season is very kind of backfilled because of the initial yeah. uh, delay. We have a lot of matches really quick, so uh, whether we can make it there, I think is going to come down to a lot of endurance, yeah. honestly, rather than uh, our performance and practice and everything, because that's been pretty solid. Awesome, man. Well, good luck in the games today, and we're going to go ahead and hop into this one, guys. Kanga versus SSG coming up next. It's going to be a great one, too. I think this is probably going to be one of the better sets that we get to see. Well, I mean, I guess it's the first set we get to see this week. And it's it's gonna like going to be the best to... set we get to see today it's... to start the day. Yes, exactly. That's a great way to word it because it's going to be putting the stakes up high. And, I mean, there's just so many big matchups. Outback stakes? Um, well, it kind of depends. If Kango win, maybe they get is their Is Krezik tall enough to reach uh, if <laughs> Hades holds it up? That's the question. That's the biggest I'm not sure question I am. of them all. Yeah. This has probably some of the bigger matchups across the way. Like <laughs> you're looked, I'm trying to pun whatever is. <laughs> you, you looked at the front lines, or we looked at the front lines. We uh -huh. kind of looked at the blasters and talked about Evil Eye and Freeze God. But there's also an element of Chronix versus Ares, where Chronix, I'm just gonna like he just has better aim. Mm. He has, I think, more versatile champions in that kind of pool. But Ares has been doing his best to keep it up. He's not the win condition for the team like Chronix is for Kanga. But if he has a lackluster day and FRZ God isn't able to kind of make up for that lack of a performance, it might not swing the way SSG thinks. It's interesting because Chronix is more of the staple veteran guy who's been there forever for Kanga, and he's really more in line with a comparison to Freeze God, although their champion pools differ because Freeze God's more of a blaster main, although he can play the Leon and the Cassie. Evil Eye is really the guy I would compare to Ares because Evil Eye has this high ceiling and sometimes doesn't show up that yeah. way and is more of like, okay, who's going to make the play for Kanga? Ares, like I've said again and we said last week, needs to have a positive performance in these games. He's got to, if anything, make life just a little bit easier for SSG. Not too much, but he's got to get overall more kills in his 1v1s than he does deaths. Even if it means backing off a little bit, uh, not having as much impact all the time, but having a good impact when you need to, that's what this team needs from Ares. There's so much there's so much on his shoulders, but he's a big, strong man. He's happy with how he's gotten to this point in his life. There is only up to go for, uh, go from, for, from here for him. So I'm excited to see Ares step up. I think I've been calling for it all week. Uh, this is the yep. chance for him to prove it. And this is probably one of the biggest moments, especially because, as we've kind of hinted at and, and mentioned slightly, but Mittau not feeling the best today. And we've had kind of seen what uh, has that been be able bad. to affect in performance-wise. Because yeah. I think it was a few weeks ago, G-Bunny was sick on the nights, and it was yeah. just night and day compared to what we are used to seeing out of him. I mean, that was – it comes through, like, your head's not going to be in the right zone. Your decision-making's not going to be as fast. You're going to feel kind of sluggish. And when you're someone in, like, let's say G-Bunny's position, you're the off-tank. You're making a lot of decisions. Like, you have to be in that zone. Yeah. And I think it goes even more so for somebody playing support. So Mittau right now potentially in an interesting spot – as Splitstone, Serpent Beach, Timber Mill, and Ice Mines. I think feels like Kresnik's been hanging around the casters a little bit, banning <laughs> yeah. out those two maps. They're all going to get banned away there, and Ascension Peak's going to be open. And again, I, I feel the nece like it necessary to highlight that Kanga has been really good at Warder's Gate, so if they go down two, expect to see them potentially scoop that one in. They are also uh, pretty adamant towards Ascension Peak being a map that they get themselves on. It is a level of confidence to take that map. It's a little unique. One of the things, Kanga, if you're actually a very old school Paladins esports fan, uh, is that they would always prep the timber mills, they'd prep the ice mines, they'd prep the fish markets. This is when we only had, you know, six or seven maps and only two bands, not four. So you had to maybe play one of them. Most of them were banned out. But the big thing was they were specializing in maps no one else really wanted to prep on. Yeah. And that opened up uh, them the chance to win a couple of weird maps against great teams. Again, they're, they're a semifinal team at a, at a world championship for a lot of their history, just not able to escalate over that hump. Um, but I think right now, this is their chance to start doing that. This is a team that was in the World Finals last uh, pretty much, you know, in the World Finals last year. That semifinal yeah. could have been a World Final if we looked oh, at yeah. it against Envy uh, going to seven. So I think that Kanga get a huge boot of momentum if they can actually win on this. And starting off on Ascension Peak, that's a great way to go. And I think that's the, the biggest marker for today. For SSG, if they win, it isn't necessarily as, as huge of a takeover, right? It's just no. kind of, it should feel a little better than business as usual, but at the end of the day, it's like, cool, you got this win, people expected you to. If Kanga get this win, 
it is yeah. tide changing. Like it changes the way the dynamic of like the standings. It changes the dynamic of the teams. Like a lot can hinge on how Kanga performed today. And I know a lot of players have been like, I think I saw some people from Envy throwing out like, it's going to be a 4-2, probably in favor of SSG. But like two maps is still really good for Ganga if they can push that envelope and maybe carry some momentum. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's also good because they haven't played against each other and we're always still determining relative power levels compared to uh, these people. This isn't Dragon Ball Z where we can just use our little uh, the scouters. scouter and find <laughs> out what the power level is. It's constantly shifting and sometimes people are hiding it because of, you know, they're, they haven't gone Super Saiyan yet. We don't quite know if there's that extra level inside of them. And uh, both of these teams appear to have an extra level. I feel like if we get to the point where, like, Ares is, like, 18-2, and two, three games in a row or something ridiculous, we can say that he's gone Super he's Saiyan. He's gone like, Super we've Saiyan. We've set that yeah. up for yeah. ourselves. Yeah. And I think that's, again, where you're going to be looking. I think Freeze God almost always consistent on his performances, but this is going to be an interesting map because Ascension Peak isn't really known for, like, an Eevee to come through. We've seen a lot of Andros here, but a lot of Drogos specifically, I think, shows his head here a little more often. And that's another god, or another champion, that Freeze God has shown himself to be a god on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's uh, the god of war and the god of freezing, the god of ice, so to speak, are going to have to perform today for SSG. We've yeah. talked about that numerous times. But at the end of the day, they do have to also bring a validity to their drafting uh, concepts here because we've seen drafting evolve over the last week. Uh, very yeah. very heavily, especially because the first week was Imani and Atlas released. Second week was everyone's now had time to play with Imani and Atlas. And how do you work around the Genos, which has jumped up? And now this week, we should see a different evolution as well, because what we saw very successfully with Navi is a way to get a con, even if they get a Genos. We also saw a way to, if the Genos is there, still create a damage amp composition with a Tyra at the end. Notably, Ares does play the Tyra for this team. And one of the things I think that was very interesting for it was actually, like, you know, you're looking at Tyra, you're looking at the damage amp there, you're looking at Genos, though, being able to kind of bring it back to supports. We've seen him banned a lot lately. Sometimes slips through, sometimes it makes a difference, sometimes it doesn't. Kind of depends, I think, on the dynamic depends of the Depends on the team. But Kanga has been a team so far who have not only been okay to let him through the bans, but also not even bother picking him up. Like, I think last week we saw a lot yes, of Yim, that was we Nick's saw some thing. Saris, we saw a lot of stuff where Jarrah just, he'll play whatever. Did we ever get an answer to that? Because Nick was determined on the cast, saying that they have to be letting this Genos go on purpose. And, I mean, I, I know he followed up on that himself. I don't know if we ever got that to the airwaves on why the Genos was being let through. He actually ended up having to ask uh, the winners, who they they didn't know, they were like, I don't know why they keep kept playing through and they kept moving on. I think it was Navi at that point in time. So, really interesting to see, right, Gore? That's a great that's a great mention. Do they even prioritize it? Yeah. Do they even care? Have they shifted in their thought process because they gave it up every single time? You are absolutely right. That's a huge uh, huge point. And this is the thing. Last week, if you go to their last match against Envy, six games played, one of them Genos was banned. And it was banned by Envy overall. Oh, yeah, it was it Envy. That's right, that's right. That's it was right. five games. They not only let it through, whether they were first pick or second pick, they just did not care. They let Envy have it, no problem. And before that last little point, what they were doing that was getting me so riled up was they weren't getting con. Every time they did have a Genos opportunity or was banned, Envy never let them get Genos. But then... They always got con when uh, you know when they were in that type of position. So, pretty obvious stuff there to come back here on the point. You have to be able to if you let a big monster go, if you let a Genos a con go, you got to be able to get an Atlas, get an Amani. That's what we're looking for in the drafts today to see if they can even it out and not lose before yeah. the game even starts. Well, we're gonna be getting to those in just a second, guys. As of right now, there's a little bit of issues going on behind the scenes, so we're gonna get those things fixed. Then we're gonna be coming right back with Ascension Peak ready for you right after this to you by Evo Mojo, Hi-Res Studios, iNap, Respawn, Steel Series, Alienware, and Skillshot. Hello everybody, it's me, Ekate from Virtus Pro, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to play Leon like a pro. If we talk about Lola with Leanne, we need to talk first about the legendary that is meta, and we're talking about the Eminence ones. That's the only uh, good legendary that he has right now. 
So when we talk about loadout, we want to talk about the Kudon reduction into eminence. Some people like to have heal, some people have to have more high mobility or more health to be a little bit more tankiness since it has only 2000 HP. But what 90% of the people runs is health after you hit the eminence, since it has lower cooldown. And if you hit more than one enemy, it bursts uh, the people. If you run on level 2, you have 0.5 or at least one second that you need to wait. But if you want to proc every single time after you kill a target or you get an assistance, uh, you need it on level 3. The combo that you want to have on the level is the cooldown and on level 3 after elimination, that's for sure. And the good thing is, if you press two targets at the same time, it's going to be full, full, uh, reset. full reset. So you can proc it again and again. It's really good when you're facing like a stack team, you know, when they're playing around, I don't know, on a close corridors and they're stacking, you just spawn like a laser beam all the time. It's actually crazy. Yeah, so basically right now, uh, Wormship Drogos is actually strong in this meta. So Lian is actually a really good pick. You don't want to insta pick Lian because they can just run a heavy composition with a Rookus or something like that to run over you and you. Lian is tough to play, but if you choose it wisely, uh, Lian could fit on every single map right now, since Eminence do a lot of damage, like with the Legendary, you, you go up to 1,200. So you can actually snipe people if you pick and shoot. And since it's a hitscan, it's actually, if not the best champion to counter draws or anything that flies or has, has more high mobility. When I like to, when, when the game starts on the early game, what I like to do, I always wait for my team Mostly if I have two tanks to go and push into the back line to create me space. And all I do is try to charge my ultimate and I focus DPS, North tanks. Since Lian has only eight bullets and his reload uh, isn't that fast, and you depend so much with your shots and skill, you want to prior DPS, but you want to prior uh, the survival. You want to prior to survive all the time yeah. and kill DPS. And yeah, that's the way how you should play Lian. I'm a cat and I hope you like it. Just chase the waves We'll make it up as we go If you're happy I'll show you where to go Won't you stay free Behind the town for love We run away To get us out when we're low oh. Even if I lose my ground I won't let it hold me down Just break the chains of your feet We can look down Cause that is how we lose Get yourself out It's time to break the rules We make our way So what we say to memories Hey Even if I lose my ground I won't let it hold me down
Welcome back, everyone. And now we are in position to start getting things kicked off. Kanga versus SSG. If you missed the conversation earlier, it is going to be a very big matchup overall. Kanga are looking to try and find probably what would be a monumental win, whereas SSG kind of feels like it might still be business as usual if they find the win, but it's still a good win to be able to tack it on. I think Kanga coming into the day are 3-5, and five, mm. SSG are 3-3. Three and three. So a win here, win there is definitely going to help either of these teams. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's important SSG still playing games that they haven't played, haven't had the privilege to do because they missed the four, first four weeks, and now this is yeah. a new matchup. So uh, getting this win is important for the head-to-head -head because they're also in a similar position of having won the same amount of games. Uh, but it also would put Kanga in a pretty bad spot because they'd go to 3-6, sure. and six, uh, and they would already be 4-3 and three on the side of SSG, which means that uh, they are obviously in a much better position to take a higher, higher spot heading into MSI. And that's kind of where most of these teams' eyes are on, especially at this point in the yeah. split, you're looking at, well, we need to be top six. Kanga are still kind of flirting with the edge of not top six, whereas SSG still feels a little a little more planted in their positioning. They haven't lost enough to get knocked down, whereas yeah. you look at teams like the Knights, the Renegades, they're looking to try and find fight their way out of those bottom two positions right now. So you're looking at this being... I don't even I don't want to call it a battle of the bottom, but you're looking at this having No, that's Pittsburgh and Renegades for, right now. Yeah, right now. But this is looking impactful for that spot you need to be you know fifth sixth is where you want to be to be able to qualify seventh and eighth i think you can't make i it. think uh what is pittsburgh two and seven is that where they're i at? believe so I, so what i think is this can really yes. pittsburgh are really rooting for ssg right now because the only person they've got an easy way to catch is kanga yeah. and kanga losing this will go to six losses uh i'm not sure if pittsburgh plays kanga yet again in the season but that would give them a surefire way to just tie it up and maybe try to come back on map differential uh but it also means that kanga can't slip and if pittsburgh start performing uh they'll be in a great spot obviously they've got navi later on today so oh, yeah. uh if things go as we expect from the numbers uh they will be at two and eight even if they are <laughs> two and seven so still some work yeah. to do but Kang is definitely the closest dog in the race to them. And that's going to be, I think, the key to keep your eyes on. That along with, well, when you jump into Ascension Peak, as you saw on the map screen, Genos is the one that was kind of questioned. Yes. And after a, I want to say a week of ignoring him, now they're coming in and banning him away. I think recognizing that he is very potent in the current meta. It's not that, so Gore, what, l let me rephrase what the issue was last week. Last week, they never, they didn't play with Kanga. Uh, with Genos, excuse me, Kanga did not. But they let Envy get it every time. And what Envy would do is they would ban out like a Khan, they would ban out an Eevee, and SSG would prioritize, uh, Kanga would prioritize bans of a Makoa Torvald. Luckily, SSG banned the Makoa for them. But if, if Kanga, uh, or excuse me, in SSG next round, they want that Genos, they don't have to ban the Torvald Makoa. They can ban a, an Atlas. And then if, if Kanga yet. do their Torvald Makoa bans like they usually do, they do not want to play yeah. against those two champions, Genos will be open again if they go ahead and ban an Eevee. So that then would put SSG in a first pick Genos position, and that was the issue that we were talking about. Kanga never got it, and they always had to play against it. But at least this point in time, they grabbed the con. I think there are very few teams I've ever, in their first phase of, I guess, picks for second pick when you have those first two, immediately scooped up an Eevee. Like, it happens sometimes, and it happens in very crucial matchups. Yeah. And that is very much a, well, we know Evil Eye can run this really well, and we know for us, admittedly, Freeze God kind of yeah. has to run it and has to perform on it, or else maybe we don't get to hold on as closely as we thought. You know, it's interesting because we I want to determine a way to say this because there's meta picks, the, and that would be more of the Genos, right? Yeah. Um, that'd be more of the Khan. Well, that'd be more of the Atlas. Me. But then there's also power picks, and power picks, I think, relate more towards a specific matchup between two teams. And Kanga and SSG, the Some Eevee is a power out. pick. That's an evil eye special. I mean, he almost has the name Eevee in his yeah, name. Yeah, and then that's also like an FRZ god special from the beginning of time. So that's a power pick. Uh, I think that the, quite as it's kept, the Barrack is a bit of a power pick for this team. I think yeah. Rachel really relies on it. And so they're going to pick it up. Obviously, Kanga prioritizing the Ash and the Khan. And that's one of the things we had talked about earlier when we were talking about kind of the Joel's Rhino conversation is the fact that Kanga will go more aggressive overall. They'll put Ash exactly. to Two kind of tanks. box out uh, an Anara, to box out a Barrack to try and control the point. Whereas SSG and specifically Rachel, who's more than likely going to be running that Barrack, is going to be that player that is still somehow putting up eighty to 90,000 damage even though he's just sitting there playing a, a Barrack. It's got tinkering. It's going to just be 
so solid from him, and even without a Luminary boost, like, that amount of damage is not negligible. Like, you can't ignore him. I mean, you could still run a Tyra for some Damage Amp there, because Damage Amp has been taken off the table. We saw Na'Vi do something similar to this, even though the Genos wasn't banned in that situation against MV, and it just kind of got uh, not picked up. The Cassie is, is a really great lineup. It works so well with Illusory Rift. Uh, the Vision on Ascension Peak for a bigger map and a more, you have to commit to the fight when you do commit. I think the Scout's actually very good here. Um, I mean, I, I definitely like this call, SSG. Whew. Going for the Imani. I like it. They're trying to start yeah. off fierce, man, because they haven't proven to have the best Imani. And in fact, uh, we've seen FRZ God take that sometimes, but he's definitely going to be playing the Eevee. I don't think Ares yeah. can play the Eevee. Right I mean, here. they went from like two, three weeks ago not having an Atlas or Imani at, at all. all to now putting both of them on the same draft. But we don't want to hold you here any longer. Let's go ahead and jump down to the casters, get ourselves ready for game number one. Thank you, gentlemen. Dolson and Pretty Hair here for you to get into our first set of the day. And Nick, at risk of Space Station turning their social media cannon on you, who do you think comes out on top of this one? You know, the more you look <laughs> at it, I, I think what rang true to me was Kresnik saying, you know, we have a, a very backloaded schedule. Yeah. We have so many games to play still. Both of these teams have the same amount of wins at this point. Kanga's 3-5, and five, SSG is 3-3. Three and three. Just because of the amount of games that SSG has right. So realistically, right. these two teams should be neck and neck in my book. And in that case, I gotta I gotta stick with my Kanga boys. Even if, <laughs> even when we're punching up, I like to stick with the home plate. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they have been looking better as of recently. SSG, of course, uh, consistently looked pretty good over the course of this entire season. I mean, it's it's definitely punching up. I like the way you sort of worded that. I think uh, Kanga have have a a. a Upper tier fight here for them today. I mean, if SSG play their best Five, game, four, they should beat three, Kanga. But if Kanga two, plays their seven, best game and SSG slip up, up a little bit, uh, this could make for a very interesting set. My eyes are on Chronix for Kanga, uh, and then sort of the the Ares FRZ God combo over there on the side of Space Station. I think they'll be the difference makers in this one. Not a ton of. Uh, of really instances where you see Evil Eye on the Cassie. That's something I definitely want to look at as well. Rotating well. <laughs> around do -si do not a great start for Kanga. They get caught out immediately. Three different members of SSG getting up on the board here. Ares finds an early stride on the Imani. That's a double kill. Sadak getting in on the action as well. That's a clean five streak, five sweep team fight, excuse me, for Space Station. And now they can zone and capture point number one a minute and a half into this game. And there wasn't much more to that over, other than, I think, smart rotations, and they got the picks they needed. Ooh, the body block is good from, oh my goodness gracious, Rashao just body blocks the absolute nuts off his opponents there and keeps them away from the objective. Wow. That's a free payload going the way of SSG. I like the way both of the SSG front lines, Rashao and Sadak, knew that they had that one wrapped up if they could uh, lay their lives on it basically sadak went down for it he didn't have a problem doing that you could tell he was very very committed to that zone and it's going to pay off for ssg i mean what'd you see what went wrong there for kanga i mean this is they haven't gotten a single kill yet in this game space station have been on top of them since Ooh. the beginning finally joel's adds one there might have been one more uh, sort of on the retake attempt here but but what went wrong there on that point fight well, I, I didn't quite see it, but it looked like or it sounded like a frost bomb locked down both the front line for Kanga because they went down extremely quickly. It felt like, you know, one of the downsides of Ying is you kind of have to get set up a little bit to get your healing rolling. And if those two get locked down early before Gara can make his rotation and maintain line of sight on them, they're going to fall extraordinarily quickly compared to a Maldambo who can kind of really do it from anywhere as long as he's got that line of sight. And as Ares is 5-1, Definitely makes me think he definitely landed some type of frost bomb yeah. into a big splitting ice combo to start this one off. I think I think that's a pretty good way of looking at it. Kanga did have a couple of kills uh, coming off of the point fight, but none to start off the game. It was 5 for 0. Trading back and forth right now. Evil Eye's shots are good. He just ducks around the corner here trying to outpoke for Shao. He's able to do it, able to get some healing as well. But I think this is an important defense for Kanga. If Space Station are able to roll this one through in the same way that they did on that first point fight, uh, this could get it out of hand pretty quickly. Luckily, they're able to stabilize here at the moment, though. Uh, they have three ultimates to their uh, use, if that's what they want to do here. It's still about 35 seconds left. Payload about halfway there. Space Station now putting a little bit of a flank on him right now. The Ice Bomb's good to lock down Joel's, and he's not going to get out of that one. Freeze God blinks in and gets the kill. 
and now they're in a 4v5 pushing up. I think that's what it comes down to, you know, uh, maybe people assuming SSG don't really care much for Amani after the first week. There was definitely a lot of eyes on them. They did not perform very well when Atlas and Amani came in on the Amani anyway. Now letting her go 10th. Extremely impactful performance thus far. I will say, Imani has a very good early game before Resilience comes online. Eating those gigantic Frost Bombs for their yep. full duration is, it's its a death sentence. Look at this, the Dragon, even, I mean, it's burning away some damage right now. Joel's is gonna be the first to fall in this one, but just so many heads from Kanga have to turn to that Dragon and try to do something about it. Little bit of a fight going on, dancing around the shields right now. Dome Shield's gonna come out for the Barrack as well. Freeze God blinks in, the damage is good for him. Sadak's gonna be the one to find it though. And now Chronix, he was up on the balcony, had the range advantage, but he's gonna be reset. Back to base he goes. This payload is so close to going through. The squishy backliners are the ones trying to stop this from going in. Once Gara falls, I think this is gonna be it. And Space Station are up 2-0 here to start off the day. And, oh, well, they respawn out right now. I was gonna say it. Chronix though falling, that will be it. A little bit more drawn out than I think I was expecting, but uh, Space Station played that one well. Definitely did. That was one of the longer conga lines I think we've seen. <laughs> and that's kind of tough because that's a lot of, you know, kills, credits, ult charge, things like that fed back in the way of Space Station Gaming. Here was that first team fight. Everyone kind of rotated around, committed with the tanks. It looks like they got slain just so quickly where it didn't necessarily matter. There was nobody to stand in front of him. There was that body block for <laughs> yeah. goes flying. And this is not played on the new patch for those of you that uh, may be experiencing um, some of those new updates and balance adjustments as well in the live client. This is played on the same client you guys were all playing on last week, the same client the players played on last week. Next week will be the first time that we do play on the new patch. Barrett getting some uh, some pretty big adjustments there. He's looking like he might yeah. be a, a very scary, higher priority pick than Ooh, he already nice. was. Triple Fear out. Wow, that was a beautiful ice bomb to stop the ultimate. But Chronix finds two with the Enlightenment. That's huge for Kanga here if they're able to convert this. The Exiles, though, that's going to keep him out of the fight for a good bit of time. And that by Space Station, well, enough time to get back into it. Chronix is the last one here able to do some defending wow. as well as Rhino. And what a turn. The Exiles playing a big part in that fight, huh. not allowing Chronix to even participate. Dave, I think that might be the first time I, I, I've seen Exile really carry yeah. a ton of weight in a team fight. To the point where how do you come back from that type of loss at the start? The two for one enlightenment is, is usually a death sentence because not only is that a double kill for Chronix, gives him some of his ultimate back, he's damage immune the entire time. That's such a difficult thing to climb back from, but eight seconds of banish. And he also hit some, but he also hit one of the frontliners as well, I think, on I his think way back in. I think he did. Two went on to, to Chronix on the outside and then one on to one of the frontliners. And the, the frontliners of Space Station. I called out Ares and FRZ God to be the ones who I, I wanted to see step up, but S Sadak and Rashaw are having a beautiful game up to this point. He was on a 23 streak on the barrack just prior to dying right now. Kind of been able to retake this point a little bit, dancing around these statues, trying to mitigate as much damage as possible, but their health bars are pretty low right now. The healing's just not coming through. If they get aggressive, nice this job. could be another point for Space Station. And Rashao is just extremely good at Barrack. It's probably one of his favorite characters. The Dragon looks like it's coming in, but FRZ God has already cleaned up this fight, so it'll just be a formality at this point. Overtime started, likely to end in favor of SSG yep. as well, looking like just too much on Ascension Peak. We talked about the early game. There's a lot of control in the way of the Dread Serpent, the Frost Bombs, all of Atlas's control options. And if they can end this game 4-0, then they're just not going to have time to get Resilience online, Kanga that is. I mean, they're, they're setting the pace right now, potentially Ooh. for the rest of the set. A nice charge shot there from Sadak to plug away at Chronix. Just dancing around, another route there. Sets him up perfectly for Freeze God Rashao as well. That's a good setback. That's gonna set him up on a silver platter. A double kill now for the Barrack, and this payload's moving up the hill. A minute and 50 seconds left. This is a very aggressive composition that Space Station are playing. I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of a controlling composition, but they're playing it aggressively, uh, and Kanga just aren't able to adjust right now. It just feels like too much chaos, right? There's yeah. too many huge streaks going for SSG. 10 and one on the Barrack, 14 and two. I mean, all these slash lines are uh, are pretty. Let's not get it twisted, but Rochelle, 10 and one on 
What is becoming a very, very scary thing to let go to SSG. And more exiles coming through. That. And overpower to try and even the score, but Dave, this one looks like it might be over. I mean, everyone's getting kills right now, but Sadak is where my eyes go. You, you mentioned it. We don't always see super impactful exiles. Yeah. And in that game, the setbacks were good, but there were a lot of really, really good exiles as well. I mean, Chronix was, was out of that second point fight for, for a lengthy duration of yeah. time and just couldn't get involved in Space Station. That's one of the hotter starts, one of the faster starts uh, I've seen so far in the PPL. Pre-resilience, I mean, that's a four-second banish, so Chronix gets hit by two for a total yeah. of eight seconds out of that fight. One of the frontliners got hit as well. I can't remember which one it was, but I've seen Exiles, like, start fights pretty yeah. well and, like, win them, but that's, like, the first time I've seen it really claw their way back from a very tough position, so Sadak. Showing some great mastery on the Atlas. Very, very difficult and important champion that you need to have a strong mastery of. We were concerned maybe they would start out sluggishly, but that was not the case. SSG win game number one. Let's send it back to the desk and hear what they're thinking. I'm, I'm thinking if you blink, you missed it. I mean, that, that second round went by almost faster than the first round. You, you, you pass somebody in the hall, say something, and all of a sudden you're like late to the desk because <laughs> this game ends so quickly. It was domination from SSG, and it was good, Gore, because they had a moment where they could have easily lost that comeback mechanic fight, yeah. which you really have to win at this level. And they somehow manage enough of their resources, save enough of their ults to hold it down. Rachel makes a huge play on the barrack, and he basically 1v1s Evil Eye and cleans him up to get the Cassie off the board, and that just uh, allowed him to get the Dome Shield for free. Nothing makes me happier. Then when we set someone up for success, we like yeah. we raise Rachel <laughs> on this pedestal on this barrack, and then he lives up to the standard. Yeah. Sometimes that can go catastrophically wrong, but you can see there, three thousand less damage than the EV was able to put out. And of course, you're expecting Imani to be able to kind of climb to the top, but when you look at the other side, I mean, he's out damaging Chronix. He's out damaging Evil Eye. Like he demolished the yeah. numbers that this Leon and this Cassie were able to put out, and that's why Barrack's damage is not negligible. Uh, we didn't see KDAs there, so uh, hopefully we see that when we come back from this. But basically, I think Ares had a really strong game, a very, very strong game. And yeah. this is what we've been looking for. What it allowed it to do is FRZ got to do his thing. The Amani was a threat in itself. You can't pay attention to this Eevee. She's just so mobile. She does this in casual games. But in the, in the caliber of the hands of FRZ God, any other attention that is taken away on the fight helps him to stay alive and that is obviously a good thing using a little bit of the momentum uh, from the unstable fissure from atlas i mean it's just so nice the way they're able to secure this and uh it wasn't easy it was hard fought by kanga but they just could not get any finishing blows on the cv you know there are a few players that come to my mind when it comes to EV and certain decisions like i feel and we have the top tier players the top tier blasters that come through yeah but there are two who Woo! i feel like are so comfortable and confident on this EV yeah. that it just, it, it's wonders in differences. I mean, 14 and two there for Freeze got 12 and, and one and for Rachel. And three for Ares. That is a big time performance to come out after we've been talking about you and show up. Show us with your play, not your words, not your Twitter fingers. Yeah. That's what we want to see from this guy. And that's why they were able to dominate us a game that we thought was going to be much more contested. Yeah. Especially, I mean, Kanga's map pick. Like, they were first pick coming into that. Yeah. They're the ones that wanted the Ascension Peak. That's where they go for the kickstart of the set. So now you're kind of wondering, okay, well, SSG get their map pick. And very often, we have goes. seen some of these teams go like, we're going to choose ours, and we get 4 would on it. And then you choose yours, and then you get 4 would on it. Yeah. And then we go into the third map, one and one, and really confused. those first two games just don't matter. They didn't tell anybody anything. <laughs> we go into that third map, dazed and confused. That's for sure. Like, what the heck just happened? Well, I don't think I don't think that's they the way made, this. They wanted to make it a best of five as fast as possible. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> the tone of the set has really been set right now. Um, and I use that in two different ways, the same word. It's been a, a, essentially dominated by SSG. Kanga haven't put their identity out yet. And that could be a very slippery slope. Stone Keep has to be where they kind of find their foothold. Otherwise, I think SSG just have taken Kanga out of it mentally. They've taken out of it emotionally. I'm really curious to see how these ban phases go. Remember, the big thing was how in impactful Genos was, how Kanga refused to ever play with it, and also allowed it in the ban phase, but did not allow for the con or the Atlas to be on their face. So SSG now with a good opportunity uh, to kind of start their ban phase and maybe set up 
for some dangerous threats. It's going to be the Torvald, so that could that could open some things up. You know, I'm so interested to see this because there were so many conversations I had with Kresnik where he had theories of how to deal with Torvald, and it mm -hmm. was like six or seven different things, and every single one of them was like, well, it kind of works, right? Yeah, like yeah. where it's like a, the I think the essential of. I don't want to let him through, but maybe if it comes down to letting him through, we can deal with that. And I think that's one of the the odd things is that I've seen nothing but Torvald bans almost exclusively from yeah. SSG since those conversations. Well, I mean, you know, a combo with Kresnik usually is very enlightening because he's a great guy and knows so much about Paladins. Oh, but yeah. we haven't heard he's that. He's hiding his strats oh, even from me. We haven't heard that amongst a lot of other people. What I love, the way we saw Kanga draft right here, and it was actually SSG helping them out by taking away Oof. the Maeve, um, was that essentially in the first pick position, they got themselves a combo. Genos was then picked up by Kanga alongside the Eevee. So two power picks, although maybe not the ultimate power pick that a con could be, Kanga get themselves in a good spot. They learned from last week. And to me, that's a good sign that this game could be a little bit more contested. I mean, you could tell me these sides were flipped based on what's being hovered for SSG, and I'd believe it because normally Ashcon is a, a Kanga MO. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. oh. the fact that they're coming through, first off, they switch that over to a Cassie, which they still have the opportunity to grab the Ash if they Come want on, it. Come on, let's fight! Yeah. But Genos Eevee is a deadly combo yeah. that can cause a lot of trouble if you don't handle it the right way. Yeah, I mean, that Eevee you saw last game, you thought that was crazy. At 15% more damage and constant healing. That's uh, yeah. exactly what Genos is going to do for her. So, and they get the power pick, which is Evil Eye now. He's going to have his chance on the Eevee to prove what's up, and, and maybe they'll force FRZ God on something like a Cassie. Uh, True. Not sure. Still a lot to figure out. Well, this actually goes down to what you were saying. When you're, you know, you look at last game, Ares had his performance. And when I was talking about Evil Eye, or when I was talking about Ares having that and how Chronix is always kind of a staple, you said it's easier to draw a comparison, really, to Ares being last there, sometimes not being there, other times wins. to Evil Eye. Sometimes there, sometimes mm -hmm, not. Mm -hmm. Kind of depends on the day. Absolutely. So this Eevee could be phenomenal. It could be right. like what we I just saw, but worse. You're right. It also might not have that big of an impact. So it's going to be interesting to see how he can Ooh. handle that as Barrack. And Anara that's are weird. Get picked up. That's weird because this is not what we've seen in this meta at all. <laughs> Literally flip these teams and I'd believe it. But the fact that this is Kanga is blowing my mind right now. Well, you know, I, I mean, I, yeah, I see what you're saying on that. But the, the truth is, they're, they're both serving the same role. It's an overlap of roles with Kanga right now. Just like we saw the Khan Ash be the aggressive tanks, Kanga at this point are going for stationary tanks. Now the question is, does the Geno support? them enough. We know that Barrack and Eevee are great with Geno's amp, but the Inara, her big strength is being able to stay alive, not her damage. And so it will be more damage, sure, but can you keep her alive amongst what could be a lot of bursts from big game, a lot of pressure from the Ash and the Con Storm of Bullets, yeah. and we don't know what blaster SSG is going to pick up. I, I think this could easily be a Bomb King, but if they go Shaolin here, it makes me think they're really prioritizing pressuring out this Eevee and, and maybe forcing her into some more isolated situations. That's the only thing I can really think of because it does feel battle. like a Bomb King would have been so decently it. nice to blow yeah. up uh, kind of the, the point prioritization that Kanga has. And, I mean, in my eyes, and following that exact conversation, big game Cassie plus Bomb King means that Eevee's dead, front lines are dead, yeah. anyone who happens to stand on the wrong side of the line is dead. Like, it, it yeah. almost swings things heavily in your favor. So this Shaolin in my eyes at least, is going to have to step up far above and beyond what we have seen out of the last couple of weeks Who will just to it? kind of make up for it. Who do you think is going to play it? My gut tells me Ares is on Shaolin and Cassie's going to Freeze God because Cassie That's and Imani too, are the like the flex of they're the direct she damage that the blasters them, will play. And Shaolin last. happens to fall in there. But Kanga have gone double damage amp. Uh, and they've gone with a Hunter's Mark Tyra, which means, hello, Shaolin. Try to withdraw. Not yeah. really. We're going to see you. Uh, this is something that is Navi-esque minus the Genos, But Kanga have double damage amp. It's rare we get to see that often now in this meta because they're so heavily contested. But hey, here it is. I, I have my questions. But obviously, Kang is going to be the one to answer them for me, as uh, they do have some yeah. some threatening members. Well, I wrote down, just so I, I remember this, my two notes already for this game. Shaolin, pre-thoughts, 
I'm giving it a zero out of ten. I don't yeah. really like this pick okay. pretty much at all. I don't think. Go I give think him a one. I give him a one. Benefit give him a of the one. Doubt. Okay, I'll give him a one. Benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I will zero. change the zero to a one because infinitely and you know what? bad. I can justify it because I mean, admittedly, a good planted can kill off a good an Eevee. But we'll have to see how it performs to change things up. And I think Tyra's okay because they don't have a lot of dive. So yeah. I think it could be interesting. They're going to look to dive from their front lines. I mean, the Ash and the Con, that's dive, but no backline DPS to do it. Well, we're going to have to see how it performs in game. We're going down to Stone Keep, game two. Let's jump down to the casters. Game two it is, and Kanga, they have some questions that, no, Evan has some questions that Kanga needs to answer here. The double damage amp. Nick, are they really doubling down on the aggression here? I mean, is this a must-win map in this set? I mean, if set or if game two goes the same way as game number one, is this one just over? It, uh, I don't know if I'd call it over, but it's definitely a huge one. I, it's it's tough to call it that early for me, especially to give up on my lads like that. I would never, <laughs> I'd never be caught dead. I do like the double damage amp, though. I think that's gonna, it's gonna help Anara walk people down because right now I don't really know what role she was there to serve. Genos doesn't really necessarily heal her very well, so she can't go for that very passive AFK on the point style. But she can use her innate tankiness just to walk at people, and that's where yeah. she gets a little bit scary. If she's got a Luminary Mark and attacking a Hunter's Mark target, that's a ton of extra damage amp. So her weapon would actually become a very, very relevant threat to you, combined with the fact that she can stay in your face for so long. And it, it happened as the game started, but I have to give a nod to Joel's. The Inara Wall to start off this fight up here on the high ground only allowed one member of Space Station to walk through and then blocked off the other two in the back line, so the healer was not able to get through. Mittau was stuck out on the back side, and it was an easy first pick there for Kanga. And now they find themselves 84%. Evil Eye getting one. Chronix had the other two to start things off here. The aggressive composition, the walls have been good, the void grips have been good. Ooh. Freeze got flanks around Evil Eye and finds one. But Chronix continues his tear up on the high ground up there. You got to find an answer for Freeze God here, but he's not going to get into contest. Kanga, they find their first point of the day in pretty clean fashion. A big problem was that lack of uh, any dive or any pressure, despite having the two aggro front lines. It's just so difficult to push into somebody. And you're taking a roughly 40% more damage. If, you, if you're marked up and they've got Luminary, you're in a world Ooh, of hurt. Nice. You just can't get that aggressive. And Nara, it's one thing she does well, man. You, you can't really push her around. She is, is like the character that can really lock down an area almost better than anyone else. He did go into the heat haze there and was able to find a kill onto Evil Eye. This is one of those really tough parts on this map to, to wrap around Ares. The shots are good on Necronix. Finally, the Tyra gets cleaned up for them. Rhino drops the shield and is going toe-to-toe -to -toe right now with Sadak, who's going to shoulder bash his way out. His payload stalled out right here for right now. The Space Station are controlling this well. What went right in your eyes for Kanga to start off uh, that point fight there? Getting control uh, of the high ground above the point and having no real pressure on Chronix. He was able to mark people up constantly, never really fell below half HP, never had the EV in his face, things like that really, really helped him out. Oh, not having that pressure, you can see yeah. you can make a level-headed decision, you can hit most of your shots. It, the things pressure do, does to a player is, uh, is really, really scary. I mean, pressure is always that buzzword. I mean, we say it a lot, but that, that's really the, the meta and the style of game that we're in is where you put the pressure, how much pressure. Um, You're setting the pace, man. Right. The fights pace, just pace. Tend, to go, right. uh, tend to go your way. Right, and that's exactly what happened for Kanga. With about 45 seconds left here. This payload's finally rounding the final corners, but Joel's is going to get cleaned up. Chronix is able to answer back. Kanger just really pushed back right here. I mean, we, we, we said they started off this game sort of dictating the way it was going to go, but now Space Station have said, all right, we're going to plant our flag here. We're going to hold off this high ground, and you're going to have to really fight your way uphill. Yeah, they have a pretty nasty lack of range, though. Like, a lot of minor league games, we saw Knessa run on Stone yeah. Keep, how easy that was in the offense. Yeah. Like, Rhino could just rotate into that main there and find a pick. Can't really do that with Tyra. You know, you can't really do that Ooh. with Eevee. Nobody can really fire from a long distance. Pushing into a Shaolin Cassie can be very difficult. That's tough. They went for the dive onto Sadak and got him so low. Used an Ice Storm and traded out a life for it, but they were not able to get the kill. Freeze got the, the Shaolin was the question we had, and he's been good up to this point here. Overtime's ticking away. But Kanga, they're down three members. Rhino's going to be the next to go. Now it's just down to Jules. Overtime is going to expire. 
and Space Station are going to answer back on the defensive end. And while the payload had moved pretty far towards the point, I would say that was a relatively easy defense for Space Station. Yeah, I don't mind what Kanga went for there. I think that's what it's going to come down to. Like, like I said, they really, really struggle to get those ranged picks. So they're going to have to commit an Ice Storm. They're going to have to commit some type of ultimate, maybe through time and space, something to help them find a pick. Yeah. And they don't really have, like, the strongest suite of ultimates. Like, Crossfire is... It's like a less scary Hexafire, so it's very easy. Obviously, Tyra, much less HP, doesn't have the ability to shield herself. Crossfire doesn't do as much damage as Hexafire. Granted, you can move around while you do it, but you're looking at stuff like Ice Storm, Time and Space. Yeah, there's a good chance that type of stuff just falls flat on its face and doesn't get much value. And this is where my eyes are, the very start of this one, because that's where Kanga won, really. The first point was they, they started off with just one pick and were able to leverage that into so much control on the map. They don't get the pick this time. Space Station have learned. Here's the Heat Haze. He's going to get himself nice and cloaked up. Is he going to peek around the corner and try to find some kills? That's actually a pretty good zoning through time and space. Doesn't find any kills, but now he has members of Kanga sort of on either side of him. Both teams have done a flip-flop. Kanga are in the backside where Space Station just ran out of the kills are not coming through just yet, but the damage is there. That's a good stun. Ares finds the first one in this fight. Rhino, though, dancing around behind his shield. And that's a triple kill for the Cassie. Quadra kill make it. 57%. Can he find the Penta? I think it's expired, but he might be able to get the fifth. Rashao cleans it up, but Ares goes huge on the Cassie. Two points to Space Station. So much back and forth there. That was a great assert dominance stun to set it up from Space Station. The counter engage from Kanga Seismic Crash, even better just to make sure they stay alive. But then you actually saw, like, a, I don't know if you caught it, but a cheeky stun on the EV from, uh, from Freeze God on, on the Shaolin. He had this really, really weird line of sight that ended up being critical for them, getting a huge pick, opening things up, and the rest of the boys were just able to collapse. But I think Freeze God was very disciplined about the angle he was holding in that fight. He really, really, especially with recurve Shaolin, you, you don't you don't have that Desert Shadow stealth. You don't really have the explosive arrow poke from distance. With recurve, you just have to find a good spot and just be consistent. All you do is more DPS with recurve, and he's finding a way to make it useful. And it was a very similar play, what I just saw out of Evil Eye. They put down the Ice Storm, finally got Sadak with it. They tried that on the offensive push last time, and it didn't, just, just came up a little bit short. Still trading out, though. The shots have been good from the Shaolin. I mean, it's been, yeah, it was man. an interesting pick coming out of picks and bans, but you know what that I think, was? I think he's answering the questions very well. That was just an EV player knowing exactly how far EV blink goes. He was ready. The second Evil Eye blinked, he was in mid air as well. Thin air, he appears, and the arrow was basically there waiting for him. So, Breeze God has played a phenomenal set thus far on the Shaolin, on the EV. EV, one of his favorite, most infamous characters I think he's known for in this league. 15 streak burning on the Shaolin, 8, 0, and 7. And you have to give a nod to Mittau as well. 1-0-18. The healing has not gone away in any of these fights. He's been able to keep himself alive. Save the one in our wall that prevented him from getting involved. They're going to back off right here. Enough damage came through to make them a little bit worried. They're going to raise the eyebrows. A couple picks as well for the Kanga boys. They're going to regroup and try to push this one in. 43 seconds left. So now we're starting to get to the point, Nick, where you have to decide... What do, we want to what do we want to invest in this push? Because you're not going to start, these ultimates are not going to charge now in time for the next point fight if you use them right now. Obviously, a pick one way or the other will sort of dictate how that goes. Kanga have the ultimate advantage as of right now. As I say it, the assert dominance comes out, but it looks like it came up a little bit short. So Space Station, try to invest that, but don't get a kill out of it. Overpowered mist as well. Or overpower, excuse me. Yeah. Ares. Nine, that might be something eight, to help hold this defense seven, for a little while longer. Six, and yeah, with that losing uh, one of the men of SSG, now losing a frontliner as well. Looks like SSG want to fall back on this one. They are going to get the overtime started. But more and more Ooh, picks keep coming through for good shots. And this is the Kanga I think we expected to see coming into this one. I mean, I think everyone was giving SSG the advantage, but we, we figured Kanga would put up a pretty good fight. I think that's the Kanga we're starting to see here on Stone Keep. So uh, I misspoke. It was only the overpower that got used, but didn't find a kill. Still, the assert dominance is ready. But here's Ares, the big quadra kill, doing that one basically all on his own. And all the heads are turned. Joel's finds some stuns, but he comes in to save the day. Ares does. There's his triple. Finds the poke in just a moment for the quadra.
And that's what Evan said. Evan has been saying Ares' name all week. He said, we, we need you to affect more than just one kill every life. And a quadra kill seals up their first point. Their second point, really, but their first point fight win of this game. That was a great adjustment for SSG. Just to switch things up, they really kind of lost that high ground fight in round number one pretty hard, so they don't even try in the second time. And now it looks like Kango will be the ones adjusting. Yep. They go down to the cathedral here to challenge SSG. Look at that. Getting so far in on the back line. I said, Doc, that's a good seismic crash. Just the follow-up damage there, though. One kill worth of damage is in. Rhino's getting aggressive and finds the second one. Sadak is able to answer back on a Chronix. Rhino now needs to hit these shots. If Shaolin is going to die, this could turn the fight. It does that. Four streaks now for Kanga, only losing one member. And they get the point fight. A good zone here could seal up point number three. Joel moving up to take some high ground in the keep. Evil Eye looking for the zone down long hallway, main hallway of the SSG. Ace does get a little poke there onto Khan, but doesn't want to challenge that fight for too much longer. You never know who could be showing up. Freeze God definitely uh, pokes his head out, says, I am here. Tags a Evil Eye for a 1,000. Waiting for the blink back as well. Freeze God has been all yep. over Evil Eye this game. You have to watch out. Chronix in his favorite spot up top right now. is just raining bullets down, and that's all they need. Kanga, they find really one kill. A couple kills came out just to seal the deal. The Chronix has played that high ground so well. Yeah. And now Kanga, they're pushing for the win right now. They stalled out. Space Station looked really good on the last defense, but Kanga could Ooh. win the game right here. Another overpower just coming up short for Rochelle. A lot of mid-range shots landing from Evil Eye. That arrow, he know he's looking for it. Look at how oh, panicked wow. he is. Ares <laughs> will find the bolt. Evil Eye knew the target was on his back. He needed to avoid things there. But you're right. I do want to comment on the fact that Chronix playing this high ground like almost like a battlefield general, right? He's just marking people up, marking them for death, and nobody's been able to really contest him from up high. He doesn't do the most damage from up there. Tyra is a pretty mid to close range character. You can drop those grenade launcher bombs onto people, and those will do full damage from distance. But ultimately, once the fight gets going and snowballing in Kanga's favor, that's when he can start to move and get aggressive and into optimal range. Ooh, this is the 1v1 we've had our eyes on. Who gets the better of it? Neither of them just now. Freeze God does end up getting the better of Evil Eye, and that one through time and space gets one to answer back. And this is just a fight to get back to the payload right now. Gara with two now oh. in this fight through time and space. And then one just with the uh, the main attack button there for him. Sadak able to stall things out even further. A minute left. Kanga have a pretty big Look fight ahead of them if they want to push it through. This is just a player that knows Eevee so well that he can take this matchup with full confidence. Freeze God knows everywhere that Evil Eye is going to be before he's even there. The blink distance, it's all dialed in. It's been very, very clear that he's had his eye on Eevee this entire game, and shutting it down is going to oh, be his nice. priority. That's a good stun. A little bit of a body block, a little bit getting in the face there is Joel's prevents Evil Eye from going down. Sadak, though, it's, it's been like sort of some, some unsexy kills, as I like to say, but he's really been in the trenches here on that Cathedral side, just controlling this defense. I mean, it, it, every time Kanga finds one kill, Sadak is down there on the ash, finding another one and really stalling things out, preventing Kanga from really getting any momentum. With 20 seconds left now, you would imagine this one would be a defense and we'd go to a 3-3. Uh, you, would, you would think Kanga as well would try not to put too many ultimates into this offensive push if it's going to go to a 3-3 because Space Station are five strong going into this potential final point fight. Yeah, this is uh, this is a pretty tough look. I don't know if I like that wall Ooh. there. Gets blown up. It's a good firebomb. Nine and nine now. Ares will fall. Freeze got 13 and four. He's definitely had an incredible game on Eevee. A very, very good game here on Shaolin as well. Gets blown up there by Rhino, but this still does not look very likely for a Kanga push. It doesn't, just a one for one. And, and the, the damage from Barrack as well has been really good. We, we were talking with Lazy the other day. Yeah, top damage. For Kanga, we talk. We talked to Lazy about how controlling Barrack is anyway. But then you give Luminary boost onto the Barrack. Obviously, some of the other targets are higher priority. But every once in a while, when you get that Luminary boost on the Barrack, he can really control some of these fights. Just he does damage normally, but a little bit of an extra boost onto him is enough to to turn the tide in some of these fights. That's a couple kills, and that's all Space Station are going to need. So we're headed to a final point fight here. Three to three, map number two. Five ultimate strong for both teams. There it is. It's both front lines for Kanga falling and the overtime expires quickly after that. 
It's been a bit of like moves and counter moves. Kanga yeah. make the first or, or strike first blood in round one, countered out pretty convincingly in round two, but convincingly because it got kind of messy. That was yep. very like skirmishy, three, two split type of deal. I think if Kanga can stay together and really play around these hunter's marks as they have done in rounds one and three, That'll be a much better bet for them. And if they wow. can, it's very tough to kind of split them up at this point. I want to look at resiliences real quick before we get into this fight on the item screen. Because that is very, very important. When you look at all the control options that SSG have, yep. you can see five, five members strong. For both teams? Nine total in this game. FRZ got is the only one who hasn't picked it up. And he is. They got rid of the commander. They did. That's big. Chronic's losing. He's been the one who's kept Kanga in a lot of these fights. Ares as well. So they lose their damage, they lose their main frontliner, and now if they zone, they could win this one. Evil Eye dying off, I think, would seal this one up. Space Station, they flip this game right around. It was even back and forth the entire time, but what's most important is winning the final point fight. It looks like they have a good zone right here. There's one. Rhino needs to get his fail safe through. I don't know Ooh, if he's going to be able to. It. He goes down. Space Station claim game two. That one there looked like it could have been Kanga, but SSG rip it back. And again, that's not really that's not anything special, Dave. No. That's really just coming out, setting the pace, being the first team to use your ultimates, and you get yourself in a position where Kanga never even had a chance to use their ults. And that's exactly what it was that won Kanga the first few points. They they controlled the high ground with the early ultimates in a lot of those team fights, and that allowed them to win the first few. A much better performance, I would say, here in game number two from Kanga, but but Still, Space Still Station find egg. the win. 2-0 here to Space Station. Let's send it back to the desk to get Game 3 moving. Well, I mean, the biggest thing for me is I have to change my Shaolin score. You know what? I gave it the hot 1 out of 10. and You it, meant to add a 0 to oh it. Oh, yeah, 100 out of 10. No, I mean, just 10 out 1 out of, out of 100? <laughs> <laughs> You're bad at math, 10 aren't out you? Of 10. Well, now I feel like I'm, I'm in you the right You know what? Crew. I dug myself a hole just there, and I don't know of any <laughs> way out, but... Look at that, 115,000. 400 more damage Aries, obviously the true Man. carry. And having the performance, that's Look at this. what we wanted to see today. It's kind of a weird flex overall for weird them. Flex, but, but okay. It was okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, FRZ God, this is something that, uh, you know, I think Nick and, and myself have numerous conversations on. He'll probably bring this up in broadcast more so than me at this point. But if you take someone who is a 10 out of 10 on a champion and you put their DPS partner on somebody they're 5 out of 10 on, you're going to average a 7.5. But if you could put someone who's on like an 8 at, instead of that 5, and you can also be, you know, a 9 on that champion, not a 10 out of 10, but you're the 9, Yeah. then you don't get that amazing carry carry, but you, you average out as a little bit better. And I think that's what happened. I would have expected FRZ God to be on that Cassie. But uh, the Shaolin was great. They had a great performance from him. And then uh, Ares was able to do his thing. Quadra yeah. kill, man. So Doc really creating big. space. Um, I thought round before this score, he used his ultimate in a, in a bad position and actually was trying to salvage something that was not salvageable. This time he used his ultimate perfectly. Zones out absolutely to a T. And they can't even touch to trigger overtime. And that's the thing that kind of blew me away was that you're looking at it and it's like, okay, there's gonna be some big overtime fight. Like this is where the, like the true clash comes, and then it was over. Yeah. Like, didn't even get the okay, even just one one overtime bar. Like yeah. it's just like, nope, the game's done. SSG win. Go ahead, sweep it under. We're done here. It's just it was so eventful. Like three three that entire map, all of those fights, and then it kind of culminated in like. <laughs> Well, you know what? Let's give credit where credit's due. Kanga, Chronix, and the boys, they rallied. They True. did a great draft. Um, I thought that the Tyra was so good early, fell off a little late. Yeah. And I think in the compositions total, the same way I felt about Shaolin. Could have been a Bomb King there. Maybe could have been better. They got the job done. Tyra, you know, you got more damage amp. Did you need all of it? Maybe because you ran two point tanks and they needed that extra DPS True. boost. Maybe there's somebody a little more flexible on that lineup that you can actually, uh, you know, give yourself some more, I think, mobility if people start jumping in on you. Because remember, you could stay back line on this and be fine. I think Leon maybe has a little bit more back line pressure than Tyra, but she helps the whole team. So give and take preference, dealer's choice, so to speak. But either way, Kenga, 
have made adjustments and made yeah. this more of a set. It's just unfortunately two games now to Space Station and Kanga are going to have to win uh, quite a lot in a row. And I'll say this is the thing that I want to say hurts it a little more, at least like from, from my perspective, you're looking at SSG and it's a good draft and they played it phenomenally for what they had. But in my eyes, there's make a change here, make a change there. Maybe this is an excellent draft. Like this is good for what they were able to do. Kanga, it wasn't excellent by any means. There's still room for improvement on it, like you had just said, but it was better than good. It was whatever is in that little middle ground between them. Yeah. And so I would say out of that map, Kanga had a slightly stronger ja draft over than over SSG to me, and that still only got them to the 3-3. Didn't get them the map. And so that's when you're looking at it like you almost have to have a great draft while they don't in order to equalize this field. Very interesting here. Kanga now, we've seen the propensity to guarantee uh, that they will now get at least one of these power picks, even if it's not the Genos, not necessarily prioritizing that, haven't haven't won with or without it. The Torvald Makoa, guaranteed bans. This time they're split. A lot of times you'll find them on the same team. Khan seems to be something everyone wants to stay on the table. It's a good pick for Rhino and Joels. We've seen Khan and Ash work together in both games as well. Um... Ash being a priority for Kanga. And uh, SSG getting their turn with the Ash on Sadak last round, which ended up paying dividends for them. You know, and I haven't said anything about it, but I will give kudos to SSG for doing their homework. Right now, Maeve has been probably the biggest pick for Evil Eye that I think we've seen. Like, obviously, that yeah. EV last game still looked really solid. But Maeve was, I think, most of last week. That's where they wanted to go. That was a thing that on pretty much all of the maps that we have seen, the Ascension Peak, the Stone Keep, and now Shattered Desert, Look. Maeve has been very big. So it's not surprising to really see her go away. I don't think we're going to see that ban from SSG replaced unless they go somewhere where it's just like, there's no way Maeve is seen here. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that as well. We're going to see a con, most likely from Kanga, unless it is the Atlas. But I think then we're going to see uh, that other point tank, uh, excuse me, that other aggro tank, and an Eevee. I think SSG feel good about it on this map. It's super mobile. I think I can't think of a better map where Eevee would be more susceptible, uh, would make other players with who don't have that mobility more susceptible. Um, hope and so it's going to be the Atlas. I think Con Eevee is a good one-two here for SSG. And it does open up a Cassie on the side of Kanga, as well as an Ash, So that puts them in a comfort position. Uh, the only question is, are we going to see a Leon here? Because it's going to be the Imani question for me on the side of SSG when it comes back to them. Do they want to go back to the Dragon? Or is she just a little bit too... I don't know. She does really well peeking and poking. Let's put it yeah. that way. I'm not sure about her constant movement, even though she's got that little burst with her uh, Frostfire Glide. Well, if you swap Khan and Atlas here, this is the exact same start that game one had. This is everything pretty much the exact same again, only Alice and Khan coming through. This is where Kanga originally went Leon and Ash. Yeah. And I think Ash is definitely going to be something that comes up here. I'm actually looking towards maybe a support just to try and give yourself as long Warm of a time as possible to just stop them from Pray being able to find to a counter. Gods. And there it is, Mittal and Jera battling it out. Mittal has been fantastic on the Damba. Uh, obviously, Jera was able to play the Genos. And uh, he's going to get the Damba now in his hands. I got a question for you, hypothetically, Gore. Do you think anyone that uh, was picked after Atlas on the side of Kanga okay. is better than Khan Eevee? No, I just don't think so. So, and that's the big thing. With this draft, Kanga are getting a first pick, but Atlas Khan kind of neutralize each other. I think Eevee takes precedence in the Kanga SSG matchup for Evil Eye or yeah. FRZ God, more so than Ash or Damba. I haven't seen Ash be the difference maker for Rhino. Um, and Sadak is, like, good on it, but it's not the difference maker. Yeah. Last game, he had some great plays, but he also made some big mistakes. I think SSG, even in the two pick now, have stronger wild beasts as far as these champions are selected yeah. than Kanga, even in first pick. And the thing I'm looking at is also the fact that, first off, I think the way you word it is like a power pick. Like, this is a very specific matchup pick right. where it's going to be, is Eevee going to be a second pick for Can everybody that comes to right. No, absolutely not. There are some teams that can't even run an Eevee. No. But when it comes down to how big of an Your impact you can have on a map, you. especially like this, as you had mentioned earlier, it makes a big difference. You get Ares on something comfortable like the Cassie, you get Freeze God on something comfortable like Eevee, and yeah. you have the equation for success. Like Kanga could be a little bit better last. off, you know, uh, banning the Eevee and then putting them in a position where, okay, we get Atlas, you get Khan, 
uh, you know, maybe maybe you want Cassie. But then we can get Barrick Imani, right? Yeah. Maybe we can do something like that. So that the, the power feels like it's it's level. I think SSGs still are in a better spot here. Although the Atlas, I mean, when played to perfection, BK, when played to perfection, if Evil Eye's on point with that one, it is going to be a very good Kanga roster. I yeah. like their picks for their roster, um, but I think SSG, pretty deadly, man. All of those champions could pop off. And I will give some credence. I think Ash on this map specifically, because of the AoE spread of her shots and the hills that are all up and down, kind of helping players get in or out of range, She could be. Yeah. it's going to be pretty good on the point. The same yeah. thing can kind of be said against Cassie, so it's going to be interesting to see how these performances can match up with the map. Kanga have one that I think works, but like you said, it's going to be very, very execution-based, yeah. very heavy on how well they can perform. And well, when you're down to zero, sometimes that starts to shake up your mind. But we'll see if SSG can keep it rolling or if Kanga can start to fight back as we go down to Shattered Desert. Shattered Desert it is. Game number three it is. And another Shaolin comes out here. And Nick, neither team, we've only seen Imani once today. So out of the other three potential game or two potential games, I should say, we haven't seen the Imani come through. But Shaolin comes through yet again here. Granted, on the opposite side, what do you think about where he's at? He's my only question mark in this game. I think everybody else has a champion that, that they would ride or die with, blind pick into <laughs> any composition. I think they all feel very good about what they've got, except for the Shaolin. Uh, Chronix on Shaolin is just not something I, I really think of going hand in hand. And hopefully Kanka can use their other power picks to win off of and not really put too much reliance on Chronix. I think he's going to have to be big for poking out this EV, bursting her down with those 1,300 damage explosive arrows. Well, I was wondering if Eevee was around. In the meantime, though, Kanga find three. I was, I was See, I look at that fight and I say, what's what was the plan there? Right. It's just like <laughs> full speed ahead, Captain. <laughs> and uh, somebody comes Shattered out on Desert top. That's what Shattered Desert is. You just... You just Put the foot down on the gas. I like this. And skin. you just you just go for it. Yeah, the skin is definitely clean for Chronix. shalin has got some goodies. You know who hasn't gotten some goodies? Nope. This, nope. This <laughs> poor, poor soul. Doesn't she have like ten skins? Yeah, but they're like that? two years old. Poor Freeze God, poor Eevee, poor they me. They front loaded her skins. You know? They front loaded her skins. Like Chronix! though, has front-loaded the damage in this team fight. Okay. He's answering the Shaolin question with a triple kill. That's going to seal up point number one for Kanga. Must be the skin. I think it must be. It's a new leaf turn. Wow, look at the explosive arrow. Q yeah, the little fix. That's so sick, I really dude. like that. Oh, my goodness. Shaolin is getting some banger skins here, and uh, Chronix is definitely doing them justice here. He looks dialed in. Let's look at the damage charts after that first fight as Chronix looks like he is the first one to reach his ultimate. Granted, that is a fast charging ultimate. So you yep. can see with more damage done, Evil Eye still has not charged the King Bomb as opposed to Heat Haze being charged with about 13. It, it's a fa It's not a flat damage like you need 13k to charge Heat Haze. It's, <laughs> it's a factor of that and how much time has passed in the game. There's a, a, some sort of percentage factor going in for these champions. Each damage point gets you a certain percent charge back to your ultimate. Ares is going to clean up Rhino here. The payload's still moving forward, though. Evil Eye and Chronix are just walking this one down. Now they're behind the rest of Space Station. The Ice Storm's going to come out. Maybe a bit of overkill there. Uh, but regardless, they seal up the defense. A minute and 20 seconds left, though. That payload moved really far forward. And that was really important, I think. I mean, this map specifically, we always see the payload can move downhill very quickly. This is a honestly a sort of tough map, I think, to defend on because there's so many different routes the attacking team can come at you from. All of them at the moment, though, going around this right-hand side. I think I saw a sneaky Chronix flanking around the backside, and it is. He finds one onto Ares, so now the damage Whoa. dealer's down. Here comes the King Bomb. That's a stunned up. Barrack is the damage there. The shields keep him alive for just a moment, but Joel sees to it that he goes away. Sadak and Freeze God are the only two now on Space Station that answer back. The second chance is good for some Aww. healing, but that's a good stun as well. This one is on a knife edge. Very good attempt there from Kanga, but I just think it's yeah. going to start going back the way of SSG. They did get the dome shield out with no Ooh. value gain. Triple kill for Ares. That was great. And uh, Evil Eye is using the, the Love King music it looks like. Is that Maybe what I that heard? Skin. Just <laughs> and it, it, it was an audio bug when that skin came out. You would just hear this like low, kind of groovy, yeah. love-making R&B <laughs> track. <laughs> and it, if, if he died kind of during that King Bomber close to it, he is using Love King, it looks like. 
That creepy flesh tone. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. It's, it's like a gremlin. I, I hope there's a lot of audio bugs that are stupid annoying on Spectator, but no, that's, that's that hilarious. is not one of them. No, I, I love, love that audio bug. It's so fun. It's like such an inconspicuous thing as it's flying through uh, to deal damage. It's like a little trumpet. Yeah, it's really good. And without moving your mouth. You can't see it, but his mouth is entirely <laughs> closed right now, so that was really impressive. My spirit animal is trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> is mayonnaise an instrument? <laughs> <laughs> there it is, folks. Overtime expires. As the memes are already flying here early on a Thursday afternoon. Chronix, he's all business, though, dialed in. Good first round for him, yeah. though. He's been... I mean, we... we of course, we always say Chronix is, is the difference maker on this lineup because it's like you have a day where Chronix pops off, and those always tend to be the days when Kanga win big matches. Wow. His matchup against Virtus Pro was huge. Amazing shots there for huh. the triple kill, sealing that one up. Quadra kill. Didn't even realize it at the time, I guess. But Shaolin has been the question mark, and now two games out of two, at least up to this point in this one, it's looked really, really good twice. It just feels like it's uh, maybe evolving to be the natural answer for an Eevee. It's a it's a character that has so much burst damage yeah. and can very easily hit that 1,800 damage mark in a short amount of time. Chronix is running explosive arrows, so you can see every time he queues up that little swirly arrow, it adds an additional 300. If he can direct impact it, he goes right into wow, the planet that's a after lot of damage. that. And that is 2,100 damage. He's almost one-shotting most of these regular damage characters. Oh. Eevee is far and away super dead at that point. He's obviously a very tempo-based champion as well. Once you start hitting those arrows, shot, 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 whatever it may be. In this case, he's found his tempo. That's a good shot on the blink back. Just buying some zoning. Kanga with 96%. That was a fast, fast point cap. They got on it, did not step off. And now they get to try their hand again at another offensive push. That happened so fast. It did. Just They uh, grow up so fast. <laughs> and that's how it has happened in both rounds so far. Hasn't felt like much of a you know tactical plan. We go in, we use this ultimate, follow it up with this. It's like, okay, we're just going to go in, smash out, and hope that we come out on top. So far they have. SSG and the boys have not found much of an answer here. And this is one of the newer maps in the game that has proved itself to be a very sort of skirmishy, brawly. Some people have gone so far as to call it a... A TDM map with a payload attached to it. <laughs> hey, I dig it, though. I love that. At least uh, I, I always ask that there's just a different flavor in every new yep. map. I want, I like these new elements. Can't remember. I Somebody told me the last time I asked this, but I can't remember what the new one's called, but it does have some more new elements to make it unique. Like Bizarre or something like that. I think You might be right, actually. I, I played on it last night. I was, I was running some, some fast queue, and I it's actually a very fun map. I'm very excited for that to make its way in. Three kills, four kills, excuse me, for Kanga, only one for Space Station. But this is this is the area we saw the payloads stall out in the the last round. Five seven for Ares, six four for Sadak. I mean, he's really the one I think that's clawing this back. The 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 Cassie and the Khan have really been the two that have held this in for Space Station. Whereas on the Kanga side, everyone has been looking really good. But Chronix at twelve and four where you have to keep your eyes. That's some good plug damage. Oh, the explosive arrow sets up a kill for Evil Eye. This one could go through. That's a double now for the Bomb King. His payload's getting really close to going in, and I think they'll do it. Three to one now for Kanga, potentially winning the game on this next one. Well, uh, color me impressed as Shaolin starts to carve out a place for himself in this set at the very least. I like the way that Kanga drafted this one, though, I have to say. Yeah. Managing to... You know, you give away, sometimes you give away power picks to, to, you know, great teams. And that's okay as long as you have the plan to deal with it. Where you get into trouble is when stuff starts to slip through that you weren't necessarily thinking of. So giving away the Khan Eevee to SSG just to make themselves all wow. the more comfortable with the Ash Damba and the follow-up set is something that I like a lot. Joel starting to uh, come alive on this Ash a bit more. He's been playing it. More and more, even when uh, when Khan is picked up now, Rhino plays the Khan, Rhino plays the Atlas. Rhino will also play Ash. It's just a matter, it feels like it's a matter of what Rhino wants. And when Rhino gets very comfortable and Joel can be comfortable, yep. then this Kanga lineup starts to do very, very well. I mean, Chronix is the name we say, but Rhino's taken some games over himself. The King Bomb's going to be good onto a stun, but the resilience is going to get Sidok right back up, right into the fight. Chronix, though, from the back line, he's still finding some damage. The overpower onto Rhino's good here. 
So two for one for Space Station. Kanga, though, still has some key members alive. As I say it, though, Chronix goes down and the fast cap is around for Space Station. They found an answer to the seemingly unstoppable Kanga point fight. There it is. Big battle shout comes out, tops off a couple of targets. Fast cap enabled, no ultimates to work with for SSG. They're very close on the illusory rift. They might be able to get that one. Evil Eye falls out into the quicksand. I don't know what he was doing all the way out there. No teammates really around him either. That is a that's a tough way to go down, especially in this situation. You could have been putting your first game away. Yeah, because I guess he wasn't. I guess he wasn't respawning from the point fight. I guess I think he might have still been alive from that point fight. He was just trying to re reset. He he wasn't necessarily getting staggered out, but finds himself out in the quicksand. Space Station, they find point fight number one and point number one. Point number two, but uh, point capture number one, I should say, of this shattered desert game. Now we get to see how Kanga do on the defensive end. No game to win here for them. Only a defense and a reset. Space Station could tie it up with a successful push here. And this is really where we've seen the battles go down. Ooh, that's a nice two-man, almost a three-man stun. Down comes the banner. Down go the health bars. Evil Eye, Chronix, Rhino, all falling, following up with some damage. There it is, 142 left on the clock for the offense in this round. Let's see what SSG are able to do with it, but you're right, that was a uh, show-stopping ultimate. Comes around the corner, almost blind to get that triple stun. And that's the way you got to do it. You got to just feel it. You got to feel it. Uh, feel it in your jellies, <laughs> if you will. You did. I just saw Detective Pikachu last night, so I, I haven't seen to come it out. yet. Is there? Oh, well, I was gonna ask that's one of the spoilers, phrases. but I need to. Got it. Feel it in your jellies. I well, hope that doesn't count as a spoiler. I don't think it would. Well, you ruined the movie for me. No point <laughs> in going to see it now. Evil Eye and Chronix continue their tear here. I want to see where resiliences stand uh, on the item chart here for Space Station because I saw a couple of their members starting to pick it up. Yeah, so four across the board, two for most of them, only one on FRZ God. And that's really good. I mean, you look at it, the, the Exile, the Setback, the King Bomb, the Dread Serpent, the Assert Dominance, all of that getting affected by resilience. And, and that's one big thing to look at at the Kanga lineup. They have really good ultimates and really good abilities, but the economy then shifts when you force Space Station into buying wow. a couple of those resiliences. How did that do no damage? Those three little bombs he set up, Evil Eye 13 and 6, 16 and 6 for Chronix. The back line, Kanga Esports having themselves a good little game here. But normally that's the natural way to counter out EV. If you can catch her on an ice block as Bomb King, you just kind of set up a couple set of up a little uh, trap. A little trapsy daisy, but Healing could have come through right when. Yeah, but he backed off and it looked like he didn't hadn't even taken any damage there. Sometimes, like if you pick up chain reaction, is he chain reaction? Can we take a quick look at the talents? I don't think he's chain reaction. But Evil Eye is uh, one of the guys that talks about, you know, you can pick that up. You can, if you're picking the right targets that are easy to hit or you're following up off a lot of stuns. Chain reaction is a way that you can go, but so often we're ta we're looking at royal subjects and it it is royal, it is subjects, royal subjects, which is okay. even uh, it's even making me double take it even more. <laughs> well, heads are scratched, but in the meantime the payload is moving forward. Both front liners find one, but Rhino's going to be the one to find Ooh. a double. That's all they need for a successful defense. Kanga have had a great, great mid fight here in this game up to this point. Space Station winning their first one. Uh, just prior to that push, if Kanga get back to their old form here, old as in two rounds ago, they could win this. The doink of the King Bomb. But look at that resilience. That's the resilience that pays off. He gets stunned out, almost immediately comes back up, finds a kill, finds an overpower, and that's the benefit of buying that item. I mean, you force the team to buy it, but they'll be happy to because you get right back into the fight uh, yeah. almost immediately. It looks like somebody may have picked up an Illuminate as well. I know I definitely saw at least one on the side of Space Station Gaming. And it was yeah, Sadak two. and Ares at this point. Two Ares not only yet. a scout, but that's why you could kind of you could see that little sil that like shady purple silhouette there. That was what that's the soft reveal Ooh, provided that's a by big Illuminate. Miss. It is. Overpower just goes wide, especially when Kanga could win the game on this one. He sees the Shaolin tumbling back for Shao gets rid of Bomb King though. Evil Eye going back to base, that's really big. Gera as well, so now the healing's all gone. That's a very calculated team fight here from Space Station. They found the perfect members to pick off. They have fast cap, so Kanga will be able to get back. But they didn't use really too many of their ultimates. Exile, yeah. King Bomb, 
Assert Dominance already, only the Ice Storm for Space Station. That's why they won that fight. They were able to get off their ultimates. Kanga have a chance here to come back through and retake. Here's the King Bomb. There it is, the Super Speed King Bomb as well. He's looking for a ripe target, though, and he's going to get the Insta-Gib onto Barrack, falling uh -oh. off with some of these bombs, oh, but no. shut down by the Ice Storm. Sadak saves himself, but eventually falls. Joel's and Chronics are going to come right back into this one and find kills for Kanga. Exiled. And now 51% oh. and climbing. A good zone could win Kanga their first map of the day. 69, 72, that one's going up. He doesn't see the flank around the right-hand right side right here. He could get caught off guard. They need to get in and get a touch. The overpower is good this time onto Joel's, but Garrett gets Rochelle. He's not in a position to get a touch here. They could win this one. Just get back on the point, and they do it. There it is. Kanga find win number one. I imagine we'll get a little Hade side-eye coming down the hallway here, as we so often do. A much, much better game there from Kanga. And they win game number three. That one uh, definitely has to feel good. There it is. <laughs> feeling much better about it is uh, is Young Hades as he passes over our uh, little spectator. That wasn't even window. a side eye. That was just that was full, the full blown. On, <laughs> the full Monty, if you will. I think uh, SSG were making good adjustments there, to be honest. Yeah. They uh, pick up the Illuminates, which is not something you see very often. But when there's a problem, you got to solve it. When that problem is Shaolin, that is the answer. Well, there's the answer back from Kanga. Two to one before we head into game number four. Let's hear what Evan and Gore are thinking on the desk. I'm thinking Kanga bounced back pretty much the way they needed to they are at kangaroos. the right time. Yeah, they do have that, that ability to jump high. So, yeah, just got over some of the issues in the uh, in the game pretty quickly. And as you can see here, the Sha Lin making a big impact for Chronix and made a pretty big impact for FRZ God last game. This time, Ares well outperforming FRZ God damage-wise. Although that can be expected of a Cassie uh, EV matchup. Gera had a 27 Assists, which is uh, being involved with his two kills in 29 kills. That is uh, the highest on this team, aside from Chronix, uh, who obviously looks like he was involved in about 35. He was basically at his hand and everything. The numbers kind of speak for themselves. FRZ got 4 and 7, Aries 10 and 12. It looked kind of decent at the very beginning, but, you know, we had said, I think coming into that was, Kanga, they just have to execute it. Like, how does Bomb King look? Well, Bomb King look really, really solid. Oh, yeah. How is it like when you finally get Mitau off of that Maldamba and get it for Jera? Well, it seems to change up the support role. A lot of the stuns, a lot of control. And when it came down to it, that was the big thing. There were so many, like, either snake stuns or exiles that were followed up with one Bomb King bomb, one explosive arrow. And mm -hmm. for the most part, that two tapped everybody. Mittal's impact has been so big on the Damba with the stuns, with his uh, Dread Serpents, with his ability to uh, set things up for his team and even finish off killing blows. Damba does pretty decent damage, to be honest. He hits as hard as Leon, but it's just a little bit harder to, uh, to manage. Shot, to, yeah. but it's 400 damage, so uh, it comes out very quickly. That's been a little bit more for pro players, a little bit easier to access yeah. because uh, the, it used to be, he used to go like this. Damba, Damba Spitz used to be like that, and now they kind of like this a little bit, so you can definitely take advantage lowered of it. Lowered the arc just enough where it's like, well, maybe I can like kind of shoot at you instead of not shooting yeah, you. Yeah, I think they lowered it twice, to be honest. I think they made it I, that would not lower the arc me. and faster projectile speed a few times. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. He needed it. And, uh, you know, yeah. it still hasn't equalized. I think the pros still play it the best that I've seen out of everybody that I've encountered with Maldamba. That's true. It's not and, easy. I mean, that's just something that I think, again, goes to mention. Maldamba is probably one of the most difficult supports. Every single one of these guys makes it look easy. But the amount he adds to the game, like the stuns that he can bring, the amount of healing he can do in the right scenarios, like it is ridiculous. And then a good Dread Serpent, like oh, forget, yeah. it, forget it. Like, that changes the game. We don't talk about this because it's in his cards, but Mending Spirits gives you 35% movement speed while you're getting the heal. There's really no other healing situation that gives you that aside from a Furia popping an Inflame uh, and maybe a Torvald Wind Dancer. Those are the only support abilities. Um, Khan can also provide that as well. But it really, when you look at giving movement speed and healing, it's such a powerful, potent combo. Yeah. And on a map like this, which is all about moving and rotating, that's where I felt that they were just able to get that shot, get in position a little bit easier. Uh, and Chronix obviously showed up big time. So uh, they got to shut him down. The Shalins played much more of an impact than we would have guessed, Gore. And uh, it feels like now this draft is starting to evolve considering the impact it just had with Chronix. And this is where, in my eyes, this is how sets shift to four four twos, right? This Absolutely. is how it shifts to six games. Because when you lose control in game three as the team that was up 2-0. Absolutely. It's now, okay, well, you get your pick. 
usually teams can win on their pick. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. This could be a Kanga win, but this is SSG being able to say like, okay, now we're going to take you back to our home turf. Yeah. And then you get to map five, which would then be if this one goes the way of SSG, goes to Kanga, they win that one, then you go to map six. Like it just goes back and forth at that point. Right. But when you choose a map like Bright Marsh, yep. it kind of changes the pace of the game because Bright Marsh, it's a standard. Yeah. We did think that Eevee would have a bigger impact than it did. Yeah. And maybe it's discovering Shattered Desert a little bit more. Or maybe it's FRZ got out a bad day. It feels like he's been firing on all cylinders. It seemed like more of a composition issue versus them not being able to uh, to play well. Bright Marsh is a great Eevee map. SSG with the Genos, Torvald, Bam, Makoa. Now most likely a Mave, or it could be an Eevee if they want to sh change some things up. Drogos is an unexpected Apex Predator in this map, but it's only if you don't have enough reliable hit scan. And the way these drafts have been shaking, I'm not sure that's going to actually happen, but if something ends up taking place, like we see like a Barrack Ash, yeah. and then we end up seeing like a Cassie uh, Bomb King, something like that on the side of Kanga, a Drogos could come in at the end and and just really rule the skies with some hard matchups for Evil Eye and Chronic. So look out for that uh, if things get a little hectic with the Eevee going early to Kanga. Well, it's open here, and so far, most of these games we've seen Eevee. In fact, every game she has gone here in this third position, the second pick that Kanga could grab if they want to go for it. But with no Genos this time, wondering how confident they are going to be feeling in picking her up. Just because she is, even though she's a staple for both of these teams, it still feels like she's a little out there with some of these maps, but I think Bright Marsh, it's half and half. Evie, as much as she creates pressure and alleviates it life. from other people, sometimes relies on people creating lead. the pressure so then she can create the pressure. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's like you need to give her a little bit of wiggle room to then have a huge impact. Yes. And when she does have that huge impact, then you giving her that wiggle room is easy because then you don't have a lot of eyes you and focus on you. Like I put a shot over there stranger. and all of a sudden she can get three kills. But if Evie's the only thing you got to worry about, and, and, and it wasn't like that showed up last game, but if she's the main cannot. focus, you kill her, everything's good, um, then it can be a little bit like doesn't have enough health. She better have a, a, an astral mark. She better have a. She better have some way to get in and get out. Um, Shadow Desert is just way too exposed. This map has a lot of cover, which is why I mentioned yes. that Drogos uh, could come out, and it's shaping up where Kanga have, have kind of limited the blaster choice now, taking the Eevee, uh, like we said, in the second position. Yeah, as has happened in this set. And this is that one map where Drogos, Bomb King, I think, kind of fall on it's slightly like equal planes. I feel like Bomb King usually gets picked up here a little more often, but mm -hmm. I think in terms of their impact when you have the player that's confident in them, mm -hmm. they really don't care. They'll grab them either way. Yeah. And that's the question. SSG have both of their DPS picks up all into one area. Well, I mean, the Drogos could come out now because it's not like it's an easy matchup for the EV to hit them. It is very possible. We've seen the best do it, and these are the best. So... SSG could opt for a BK that could go back to, obviously, the Cassie's available and Monty's available. Those are all great choices. They've given themselves a wide berth of options. It's really going to be what Ares feels comfortable on, and then, as a result, what FRZ feels comfortable on as well. I don't know. I don't know. I, I like Kanga's draft. I think this is good for them. Uh, just not a lot of hit scan, but they can always flex into a Leon afterwards, and so yeah. that's what you got to be a little worried about. And that's kind of what I was thinking. If SSG are... Opting for the Drogos, I kind of want this combo to be Drogos Leon, right? Like, because Ares has a Leon. That's actually one of the champions. Like, for a long time, that's where my mind went. Like, if he's going to play DPS, mm. you're going to put him more than likely on that. He's showcased his Cassie. He's showcased oh. his Leon and his Imani. And the question is, which one do we get? And I mean, this is uh, this is the I first time getting, I completely missed it. This is the first time Mave hasn't been banned. I think we're getting an Ares Mave here. If this is actually the case, um, I think FRZ got will take the the reins of Amani. But you never know. You never know. Uh, it, definitely the best matchup to Kanga and the Eevee, which tells you how they're thinking. They're not thinking, hey, we they need to match with us. They're thinking, you know, we want to have answers for uh, this Eevee. Yeah. She's proven to be very successful. The Cassie here would make the most sense because then you can go into a scout when the Midnight comes through. So that's what's going to get locked in for Kanga. Also, big game, phenomenal against Sonara. There's no better champion to use it against. I think both teams have some lethal threats like they did in last round, and it's going to be up to execution. Well, if Cassie comes through here... Oh, she will. She better. You are 100% looking at Anara having maybe a little bit more of a rough time, but I don't know if it's going to be able to track down the Mave quite as easy. It is a good counter for the Midnight, though, being able to at least allow some tracking no and some way. sort of vision coming through. 
They switched to the Shaolin. How do you feel My about journey that? Leads me to battle. I feel so I feel less strongly about Kanga as a result. I like that. There's two things that I like about. One thing I like, one thing I don't. Chronic sticks with his guns. Just had a good game on on Shaolin. Why not try it again? Yeah. But I feel like the Cassie countering Midnight outright is a really good boon to stop her from kind of snowballing fights early, which could be a mess if Bright Marsh starts to go the other team's way too early. Well, Evan, it sounds like you're leaning towards SSG. I'm leaning I think a I little am. bit towards SSG as well. Let's go down to the casters and see how they're feeling about these drafts. Thank you, gentlemen. We're still down here, Dave and Nick, for our first set of the day. Some interesting drafts. Both teams have been drafting really, really well, I think, up to this point. What do you think about that last minute Shaolin in for the Cassie? When you look at what SSG already have, they have enough CC, especially Midnight is, is counting as a yeah. CC. It's mitigated by resilience. So Kengar saying, if we're already going to be picking up this much resilience, then we don't need Scout to counter out Midnight. Everyone should have resilience yep. online anyway. Resilience is going to counter it out for us. I mean, Shaolin has been the question mark throughout the day. Both times he's answered the shoe phone in a very very good way for us here. Another Shaolin comes through. Is it going to be more of the same? Chronix really, with the help of the rest of Kanga, took over that last game. I mean, they just didn't have an answer for it. If he does the uh, the same style of play on this one, it could be a tough one for SSG. But the Mave, I think, is also the the sort of X factor, the, the question mark on the SSG side is the Mave. Is the Midnight going to be able to make as big of a difference. How do you feel about Maeve in this situation? There's definitely a ton of control on the side of SSG. Maeve, if you can hit the shots, of which uh, FRZ God has been doing phenomenally today, I think she's an incredible, incredible character. That cross bomb does not connect. Ares is going to dutifully swing away, Ooh. splitting ice, synergizes pretty well, can cleave onto the Ying clones and off of the Ying clones. First blood will go to Mid Tao's mouth, Damba. The boys of SSG set that one up, and Midtown knocks it down. They're so grouped right now. So much value out of the splitting ice. So much damage comes through onto Kanga. Ice Bomb's going to get lobbed up. Is going to block up Joel's. He might have been cleaned up anyway. But the Ice Bomb secures it there for Ares. Kanga had 39%, but now Space Station have 75 They obviously feel very comfortable here on Bright Marsh. And this is a big one. In my eyes, obviously getting the set started, you know, 1-0, one, 1-1, one, one, whatever, whatever it may be starting off. 3-1 in my eyes is, is so different, and, and, and it really is from 2-2. Two, two. So Space Station are able to seal this one up. It could be dangerous uh, for Kanga. Still some good damage coming out from Chronix, though. He's going to get himself out of sight. Sadak just staying alive thanks to his shield. They're able to clean it up. Evil Eye sees to it that he is, but the payload in the meantime is captured and moving forward. Wow, yeah, nice little combination strikes here between Evil Eye and Chronix. They get so much uptime on uh, Sadak by himself, but that's that was really a salvageable fight. I think if, if Sadak had just gotten some help from somewhere else on the map, they could have probably gotten some of those kills there and kept on rolling. But Kanga will stuff this defense for the time being and be able to hold on just a little bit longer. Resilience is just such a good item, though. You see Joel's go into it right at the onset. Yeah. It's cheap. It's very effective against so many ultimates on the side of SSG and some non-ultimate abilities as well when you're looking at the Ooh, Frost nice. Bomb. Frost Bomb's got to be one of the best non-ultimates in the game, and that's what I'm talking about, man. All it is is autos with Maeve. If you can land those, you're unstoppable. And FRZ, he's one of the best to do it. 4-0-2 right now. On the May, if the Midnight gets as much value as you could possibly hope for, he gets a double. But the rest of his team answers with two kills as well. Kanga now deep in their base. They have an inherent high ground advantage here, but you can't drop down. You're not going to be able to get back up there. So it's the ever delicate dance of do I want to drop down? Evil Eye gets locked up there. Maybe biting off a little more than he can chew. Potentially looking for Ares in the Dragon. Didn't work out there. The Dome Shield comes out as well. The Dragon hasn't been dealt with right now, and Chronix gets dealt with by the Dragon itself. Finally gets taken out, but it's a one for zero. That lasted a lot longer than I thought uh, yeah. it would. I'll be honest. I was like, oh, they're doing a really good job dealing with it. Dome Shield, the Barricade. Chronix runs into the house, and he just kept on flying. Even at Evil Eye at the start, was like, you know, kind of made him turn his head back around and, and look at him for a little while. Evil Eye tried to get back there and assassinate Imani so that her dragon would die too, but whether or not Ares was planning it, the dragon uh, kind of took that shortcut that Evil Eye was planning on using, and the uh, two ships passed in the night, and uh, one ship can turn around and breathe fire and kill you almost instantly, so... <laughs> 
That's the ship that keeps on sailing. That's right. That ship kept on sailing right on through to the He's end of the game. Here. Ooh. Just, ooh. ooh. That was a perfectly timed slow-mo. Yeah. Honestly, that was a, a beautiful flick. Free's got 6-1-3 on the Mave, only dying once. Five. Everyone only dying once for Three, Space Station. Two, Kanga have a couple, one. thanks to Evil Eye, Chronix, and Joel's here. But they need to really turn this one around. That's a basically a four-minute, if you count downtime between rounds, first side. That was about as clean as you could hope for for Space Station. A very similar start here. They're fine with just planting Joel's on this barrack onto the point. The dash comes through right into the Dread Serpent. Great Dread Serpent, but is the damage there? Oh, it nearly is. The Ice Storm comes through. Does end up getting Freeze God. That's a one for one trade. He maybe would have hoped for it to be a little cleaner. Maybe wouldn't have lost his life. Jules now plants himself back on the point. Yeah, this is uh, not looking great for Kanga at the onset. A nice fear through the wall or through the window there. I'm not sure which, but it does manage to track down uh, and get that fear on the evil eye. And they were just never able to bounce back from that. The amount of pressure Freeze God is able to get in the back line versus what this Eevee has been able to do is very disproportionate in favor of the. Uh, the Mave. This is very, very reflective to map number one, how well Space Station are playing right now. The Shoulder Bash comes through to try to get a touch, but getting stunned up, getting locked up, I should say, is Chronix, the Ice Block, Ice Bomb. Wow, I can't speak. There's the Overpower, just going to get Gare out of the fight here, try to secure things up. They're on the point, though. In the meantime, Rhino, the kill doesn't come through. A little extra damage having to come out from Khan's auto attacks there. Gets the healer out of the way for Kanga. It's an interesting point fight in that it seems like Space Station has the advantage, but the kills just are not coming up in their favor right now. But there's no healer for him. Gare is still coming back from base. That's a good wall to seal it off. Overtime taking away the body block. Looks like it's going to seal things up here. But Chronix finds one as well as Evil Eye. Well done. Overtime started here, and the Dragon wow. just gets in there and shuts it all down. No way in hell you can play against that one. Ares has wow. the perfect ultimate for the situation and he kills everyone. Talk about value in this case. The dragons have been, I mean, really game changing. Last time it helped to get that point fight or the uh, payload push moving. This time it looked like Kanga were able to kind <laughs> Look at of dance the damage. back. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, That's all dragon damage 17, 16,000 ahead of anyone else in this game. Ares is taking this one over, 11 and 2, 7 and 3 for Freeze God as well. Just too much offensive power right now coming out of Space Station. There it is, Evil Eye trying to get in Freeze God's face, but Maeve is really one of those characters that just has the mobility to match Eevee in a lot of cases. She can dash around, she has a little bit of that sustain, is very fast, is very small. And I would say Mave autos are probably easier to hit in those closer range 1v1s that Eevee likes to take as well. Neither character with really easy autos to hit, but if you had to pick one. This is where this payload starts getting dangerously close. Kanga have to jump down from the high ground to get a contest in, but that puts the frontliners at a disadvantage just like that. Joel's back to base. There's the overpower. He has missed Does a lot not of overpowers, connect. The overpowers have been iffy up to this point today. Luckily, hasn't... Uh, affected them actually too greatly. They've they've ended up winning a lot of the games anyway, but certainly not helping them. There's the Midnight. That's a good stun, but they can't see him. Freeze Guy is able to dash out. Does end up getting hit up by Chronix. Rashao, though, staying alive thanks to the help of the shield here from the Khan. Dashes into this building here. Goodness. The Dome Shield stalls things out right now, but they're still moving forward up on the high ground. There's only one member of Kanga down there contesting. Evil Eye gets down, but he's going to blink out. Rhino's back in this fight now as well. There it is. I mean, they're doing such a good job juggling Moving around, nice stun Good there stun. from Chronix. They might have to get in this. Evil Eye goes down again. Here's the dragon, uh-oh. Uh <laughs> and you, and you, just, you just hate to hear that. When you have to stand on the objective, that is the last words you want to hear. And look at that, he gets another kill with it. 120 health and it's still alive. Finally gets dropped, but it, time and time again, the dragon stays alive longer than I think Kanga were expecting. That's a 4-0. I hope you guys didn't blink because that one was over almost as soon as it started. Lots of members of Space Station to thank, but Ares and the Imani Dragons took that one over. Two problems for Kanga. They just, they would have been fine, I think, uh, it, when items came online. They needed Bulldozer, they yep. needed Resilience.
but they weren't able to grab any of those payloads to get themselves any credits just to extend that game. It, like, that was really a problem for them. They just could not get the items they needed online. The no. game just happened too quickly. Well, it's set point here. Space Station go up 3-1 to one, thanks to a 4-0 on Bright Marsh. They're looking good going into game number five. Let's hear what the desk is thinking. I'm thinking Mave hits really hard. Yeah. Dragon hits a little harder. Yeah. And SSG, that was a... A steamroller going over something really squishy that is easily steamrolled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's. I guess that's a great, a great, great example. Um, my big takeaway, and I like the uh, the layer Nick, Nick brought to it, which is, you know, maybe they're looking for itemization, um, is that it was still not a great choice with what you had available. Like I had said, you know, when FRZ got picked Shaolin in the game before, they kind of eked that win out. I thought Bomb King might have been... A little bit better. Um, I think that uh, having an ult on cooldown to be able to counter somebody else's ult is just so much more reliable, and you you don't necessarily force your team uh, to buy resilience. And I, I don't know if that's where their credits needed to go early. I think the Mave in itself a ban worthy champion, but you gave uh, the ability to have maybe an inherent car uh, counter start off quickly. Yeah. But it wasn't just that. I, I think the resilience is one conversation, and it's a great point. I think big game. It, that's what ne they needed it. You saw the Inara. She gets out just a little bit, pops the Earthen Guard. She's back to full. Cassie is a natural predator of Inara. And she does well against Khan, too, who has that little dinky little shield and a uh, pretty big, beefy body to shoot at. That was something that was missed. I just think giving the Maldamba away as well, the high output, and then you don't have the, the Cassie to kind of bring that TTK back down uh, was really what hurt uh, Kanga Esport. They, they, they couldn't get any rhythm at all. They die too fast. I mean, every every moment. Kills left and right. Like, I, I don't think there was a single person on SSG you could have highlighted and had them not almost constantly dealing damage and almost constantly putting Kanga down and, I mean, just controlling them. I, that is the way I could describe this game. It was very controlling. SSG never felt like they truly lost grip of anything. Right. And because of that, I think they were always ready for the next move, ready for whatever was going to come after what was currently happening, even when Sometimes it didn't always come up directly their way. Actually, during that last point fight, it was kind of like eh, teetering on an edge, seesawing back and forth. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, there was a point support for support. It came right. down to who's going to play better. And at the end of the day, SSG just brought it. Well, what's surprising is Damba's actually shifted a lot of the, the strength of these teams here. Mittal and, and Jera both fighting for Maldamba quite often. And, and the person who's had that the last two games has won the game. Curious to see how they make any adjustments, but now Kanga fighting for yeah. their lives. Can't lose any more, otherwise they're going down. Well, guys, map number five is on its way. But before we get there, we're going to kick it to a quick commercial break. So we'll be right back right after this. Make room. The real star is here. I've been perfecting this look for months now. To me, fashion is more than a look. It's attitude and lots of punching. How's my new jacket look? Let's get this show started. Oh, welcome back. Everyone told you it would be very fast. And as you saw there, one of the things you can pick up now is going to be the street style skins. They're definitely worthwhile. It's going to bring you Mave. Ash, Sky, Maeve, and Ying skins. All of them look fantastic. All of them have their own little animals. And we've seen quite a few of them coming through. And of course, if there's something else that maybe piques your fancy, maybe something related to Atlas, you could also go and get the Legionnaire pack. It's going to be the Legionnaire Atlas skin. It's going to be 60,000 gold Whoa, and one gold chest. That's eight dollars. And here's yeah. the here's the perk. If maybe you get the skin and you're like, man, I, I don't have Atlas. That 60,000 gold can unlock Atlas for you. Wow. You're telling me I can go and buy a skin for a character I don't actually have. But you also get but the But then champion. get it. Yeah. Because of that. That's exactly. great. There you go. If Nailed it. the opposite were true, 
<laughs> and I could go and spend sixty thousand and not get well, hopefully and not, not even have the character. Sixty thousand nothing. Yeah. It's like buying new new rims for your Ferrari and you, you have a But you, you don't know, have a Ferrari. You don't have a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> now this gets you the rims for the Ferrari. Now what if you and bought, the Ferrari. So this deal's like buying rims for a Ferrari and then getting the Ferrari. Exactly. That's a that's a good way to it's go. It's a buy rims, get Ferrari free car. <laughs> Whoever is, we don't solicit that. That's not true. No. But whoever's thinking of these ideas, they they got the they got a good a little a little mind for value. Let's put it that way. There you go. And as you can see right down there, it's a three one right now in favor of SSG. Get it off Kinga, the. Or it won't move. I don't think oh, that's gonna work. It's not gonna work. I have a strong. See strong something. Feeling. See well, it I guess, works. You know what? It is just a delayed reaction. Now let's bring back the uh, the Gormizer graphic. You just. No, I don't think it's gonna work like that. I feel like they're not, oh, they're not gonna play around so with this good. Today. Either way, Kanga are looking to try and fight things back. We're going into map number five. This is where I things I think quick. become a little closer. Again, this is something I had said going it's into the close. last map where when you're looking at maybe four twos, the reason they go four twos is because the first two maps go one way, map four will go one way, and then maps Three and five specifically are the ones where it's like, cool, we get our map pick as the team yeah. that's losing. We can win here. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, you go back to their home court. Obviously, the home yeah. court's been pretty strong uh, for SSG. Um, and Kanga have had some success in, in picking not their first map, but their second map after they adjusted mm -hmm. and saw, uh, sorry, you know, so the third game. Uh, and now they have a chance to do it again in game five. It's got to happen. I think Shattered Desert in my opinion, was more of an anomaly than a consistency uh, for how they perform because that map is is still unique. It's still yeah. unique. And I, I don't know if um, they're going to get that with this next map selection. We're going to find out in a little bit. But I am curious as to, as to where they go. I mean, Fish Market, was that banned? What are the bands again? The bands, I know it's Ice Mines whoop, and Timber here Mills. Here we go. We got Ice Mines, Timber Mill from SSG, Splitstone Quarry, and Serpent Beach on the side of Tango. So, so you can go Jag, you can go, uh, you can go Fish Market, you can go Frozen Guard. Uh, I, I would anticipate a Frozen Guard as the choice for Kanga. They typically like this map. They played a lot of games on it. Fish Market would definitely threaten their ability to get caught out by something, but it would also, if they had a plan. Uh, be a way to maybe catch, catch SSG out as well. I think Jaguar Falls is a little... I mean, it's obviously rudimentary. It's like the first map you play in Paladins, but it has a lot of diversity as far as the draft, and the Shaolin that's been very prioritized could work pretty well on that map yeah. uh, for both teams. So I could see this going a lot of different ways. It'll probably be the one map I didn't mention, and it is. It's Frog Isle. Gosh <laughs> darn it. The one you ignore is the one they choose. <sighs> well, Chronix. Makes sense. Okay, so now let's talk a little about this. Chronix did very well on, I believe, the Knessa last time we saw him on Frog Isle. Um, they played this map nicely. We've seen Atlas get picked up, and a lot of players opt for Temporal Divide, which opens up the width of his Unstable Fissure and allows that movement speed, but also just the, the AoE and projectile blocks uh, to be absorbed throughout the entirety of the map. Lengthens cooldown by about seven seconds, uh, so you do pay that cost, but you get that shield that can be absolutely game-changing if used in the right way. Can't go with an early ban on the Strix, though, Gore, and it makes you wonder. They're just setting up for a Knessa in and hoping that SSG ban it, but it could also open up a Torvald. True, and that's the thing. I think that is going to be worth keeping your eye on. Snipers on this map have been very big. But I'm going to have to say, and I will admit, Ares has proven himself on snipers on this map. He has proven himself to be able to do mm -hmm. well. But I'm still, for some reason, on the fence about it when I think about it. And I think it's just because the initial performances of it versus the last few performances of it still haunt me because it's, it just doesn't yeah. quite click the way I think you typically want to see out of your, well, I guess, one of your main carries. I think snipers are like a breed of human. Like, I think people who are natural snipers in in video games, it's kind of in their blood. They like, I need to play the sniper. Where's the sniper character? That's <laughs> what I want. I don't think Ares has that. I think um, there are certain guys that kind of have that style. True. And, um, and I think that that's why you see him having to really just learn how to, how to be a sniper. Maybe not something that he's always loved in games. Um, and he has grown in that role. The Torvald will be banned. They're going to give up the Knessa. And Kanga are going to ban out the Ash to keep the Knessa available and force the question mark for SSG on if they want to let the Grandpa out. 
It will put an Atlas Eevee. It will put an Atlas Imani. It will put an Atlas Genos on somebody's side if Kanga go for the con, which has been the typical first pick here. And that's scary. A lot falling onto their shoulders. It's a dark day when Ash has to be banned by Kanga, but I think they've recognized that, you know what? Even though we love her, she's not always going to be able to bring it for us. We have to branch out, started. and they will go for the Atlas. So you can go, Con like Genos. you said, Con Genos. You can go Con Eevee, which we've seen a lot. You can go Con Insert Kinesa here. You can put, yeah, and like, if you leave, I want to say, though, Genos Kinesa open, yeah. you might be <laughs> signing your own Death War. But see, that's what I like about Kanga's drafting here. They actually, with the Ash ban, they take away a pretty good tank, but they open up two potential threats, maybe three, that could go their way. So either way, they're getting con if they want it. And that's that's a solid lineup. The only question is, do you want to pace your fights around that, knowing that now the Kinesa is there with the Genos, Try and you run. may need the Inara and the Inara wall to withstand some of this yeah. pressure. Because all it takes is, I mean, if you're going Atlas con, yes, Atlas's wall is good, but it's not going to stay up forever, and it has a pretty hefty cooldown. Mm -hmm. And Khan's shield is good, but man, Wrecker will tear that thing asunder. It will be Swiss cheese when Kinesa is done with <laughs> that's it. That's true. And that's what I kind of expect. Uh. Is it's playing on that, like you said, where it's just like, you know what? Khan is not going to counter our Genos yeah. Kinesa. He's a good pick, don't get me wrong, but it might not do what Kanga wants. The way he'll counter it is, uh, is being aggressive, I think. And, and, and they have two aggro tanks, so they're going to have to play it that way, and they're going to have to look at yeah. the chokes. And they may have to forego the point for a little while and, and work with the Atlas, Eevee, and Khan. I mean, talk about a Vanguard. That's a good that's a good squad to do it. They got a lot of pressure. The Barrack here and the Fernando. I like they just can't for a couple of reasons. I think it's a nice, like, bail you out card with the Immortal. Yeah. Um, and so that's really what I think. They may keep him in those situations where things get a little rough. They have a lot of damage and pressure. Eevee has that window. They full-on commit, and then the Immortal comes out. Um, and it's a decent point take with, tank with some flexibility to dive. Well, I like the Route Kangar going in right now, just because when it comes down to it, you need to equalize the playing field a little bit, and that is going to be how do you deal with Genos making Kinesa and potentially whoever this last pick for us is G, just deal more damage the to you? Well, you try to burn down their front lines a little faster. Tyra Mark, I think, is perfect at doing that. On. You know, SSG, if they played Pip, Pretty consistently, that'd be pretty scary. They, they that's a that's a champion oh, yeah. that really only NIP bring out to where you got to say, okay, we have to play around this. SSG, they'll do it here and there, but um, it's not something. The Mave uh, is really what's scary what here for SSG. Again, let out. No Cassie on the board uh, for either team. They opt for the Tyra, the Hunter's Mark. I think it's the Firebomb is really good against the Fernando Immortal, um, and they get the Dab up, which is a good sign. Yeah, I mean it's so far been comfortable and. Actually, I think Maldamba has won every single game so far. So if you're looking at that stat in this set, maybe that makes the big difference. But I think we're going to be looking at a different beast here. With the Genos coming through, Maeve already was doing almost too much damage in the last game. Seriously. And a really good slash line. Now, give her some you know, healing over time. Give her a little bit of boost of that damage. Whew. I'm a little scared of her. I'm a little scared, too. Um, I, I think both lineups did what they intended to do, and it was a tricky draft because you banned one sniper. I think uh, congrats to both teams for making it interesting. It's going to be the play that decides yeah. this one. That's where it comes down to. It's pure mechanics, and where else could you get it on a map like Frog Isle? Everything about this is going to be simple and base paladins. Let's go down to the casters, kick off what could be the last game. Man, I love me some Frog Isle, especially game five of a, despite being 3-1, I would say a pretty contended set, and I, I think we've seen Every level of game out of Kanga at this point, we've seen two games where they just get stomped, one game where they lose, but they make it really, really close on Stone Keep, and then another game on Shattered Desert where they really just take it over. And now they have no room for error. 3-1, they have to win three straight here. Only looking at it game by game, though, they need to win one here, and then two more after this one. What I thought was interesting was banning out the Strix, taking Atlas first, and then that sort of opens the door to Genos Kinesa for the other side. What do you see as we get into this game here about drafts on either side? It comes back to, you know, sometimes against these good teams, they're good at so much, you have to give them power picks 
But you want them to play what you want them to play, so you can pick around exactly what you know is coming, you know what I mean? So it, right, right. The fact that they do control the sniper economy, so to speak, and, and lull Space Station into wanting to pick this Knesset, it's part of the plan. It's still a good pick on Frog Isle. It's still awesome to have the only sniper. But it is part of the plan here, and I, I you can see that, right? If a yeah. Hunter's Mark can come out onto this Knesset, then Eevee can soar back here with bonus damage and two-tap it. That's exactly what's happening. Evil Eye didn't end up finding a kill, but you could see how hard he was making life for the back line of SSG there, blinking out, blinking in, and, and forcing Ares nice to stop. turn around, flip his head around constantly. He couldn't keep up with the movements of Evil Eye in that case. So while I, I think much to your point, while the Knesset came through for Space Station as well as the Genos. Kanga had a plan for that and, and it worked out very well. 1-0 early here to Kanga. I actually really like Joel on the con as well. It's a very it's very yeah. rare that he gets it because most of the time it feels like it's Rhino playing whatever Rhino wants to be playing, and a lot of times Joel will get relegated to, you know, playing uh, playing a barrack or playing an Ash or something like that. But now that they get Atlas Khan, which is a very rare thing to do nowadays, it's true. if they can play off of this powerful, powerful front line into Sadak, which he doesn't play a ton of barrack nowadays. That's the Rochelle pick. Oh baby it is. And then you look at <laughs> You look at Fernando as well. It's like, that's not exactly Rochelle's power pick either. That's the big conversation here. Is this Kanga have a they have such an incredible front line to play off of this game? That's very true. You're right. I mean, I I bring up how they they ban out the strict. You know, we mentioned how they form their draft, but you you get the hunter's mark, Tyra, so you get a little damage amp of your own, and then you get some great front liners, arguably two of the best in the game right now. And three minutes in. If we're ignoring the 45 seconds that count off the board when you first load in, that's a, a two and a half minute round there, and Kanga firing on all cylinders on Frog Isle. That was about as quiet of a 2-0, I think, as you can get from the beginning. Yeah. Kanga just put on the gas. Space Station didn't have an answer. It is, man. It's it's very, very difficult. I think Atlas does well against both of the Wrecker-based uh, front lines, two shielders, Fernando. And Barrick, as you, as you see, Khan just goes right through the Fernando shield. So Fernando's going to struggle here a little bit, maybe getting bullied around. Top damage is Rhino 2 and 0. That's a scary, scary thing and something you hate to see because he's got so much else enabling it. Tyra, even though she's sitting damn near the bottom of the chart, she's been picked up here to roll play, yep. blow up shields, hit Hunter's Marks, and do that thing. But Evil Eye gets picked early. And, and you know, Rhino's really adapted I mean, adapted is maybe not the right word, but picked up this Atlas very quickly and very well. I mean, in any game where you see him on the Atlas, you always have to expect a pretty good game out of him, and it's been exactly that way right here. And look at him going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The Ice Storm's going to come in as well as the Dread Serpents. Two ults go on to Rochelle, but that opens up the door for Rhino to find a couple kills here. Space Station were on the point, but with Fast Cap, they were only able to get 39%. I don't understand how that happened. And four kills. Two for Chronix. Kanga now back on the point with more percentage already. And I don't know. Another zone like last round, they could make it three. I don't get it. I don't know how that was so little capture point. It feels like, you know, they got that early pick. They go straight to the objective. Not a, not a great zone here. And wow. Two exiles. He's going to hit all three, shutting it down. No overtime. No chance and a wasted immortal. Wow. I mean,. You wouldn't expect this, but Space Station will look a little bit out of sorts right now. Yeah. The ultimate's coming out, trying to buy some time, trying to find something. But Kanga have had an answer for everything. At least here on Frog Isle, Space Station, remember, have rolled Kanga a couple times, but Kanga looking great here on Frog Isle. Chronix on the rampage, Rhino on the 11 streak. Nick, this could be a sub 10 minute Frog Isle. It very well might be. SSG Isle. don't know. They, they look like they don't know what to do with this draft at the moment. It looks like Kanga may have bested them before this one even got going. Even with an ideal start, a free pick from time and space, it's still a 100 to 39 capture. I don't know. If you can't get it done in that type of situation, I don't know where you get it done. Ooh, overpower actually missed right there. Overpower's been cursed today. <laughs> uh, Nobody for can hit either it. side, for either side, it's been cursed. Finally, it seems like Space Station are going to find an answer here on the defense. Freeze God, the Midnight, making a big difference. Going very low, though. Rhino staying alive throughout all of it. Finally drops. He was 
on a 14 streak just prior to that. Guerra trying to preserve his streak here. 1-0-13, 14 streak for him as well. And he's out of there. And he's out, slithers away, keeps the flawless death column. And now Kanga, for the first time in this game, really, are regrouping. They've, they've really been bringing the game to Space Station up to this point. They find a defensive stand here, though. Headhunter, Midnight used, but look at that. Midnight already back to 71%. Very fast charging ultimate. Found some kills in there. Lots of ultimates starting to fly. Crossfire finds one for Chronix. Make it two. Out a third now for Rhino. This could be the payload going in. Set back I think it away. Be. Back into his dome shield. Wow. The kill's good. Rhino does such a good job playing an aggressive Atlas there. Oh it's my. difficult for people to get in your face, for an Atlas to get in your face and have that type of fearlessness, but I think that's just the way that it was drafted there. The Tyra pick late yep. was beautiful. It's a very selfless thing for, for Chronix to do. He doesn't do much damage. They came all he's there to do is place some marks and enable his team to get the dub. Well, they needed three. Now they only need two. Let's send it back to the desk and keep this one moving forward. Well, hey, long time no see chat. It's been a, been a little bit since uh, you were up here. We had a whole five minute break, essentially. <laughs> you get to sit down. I'm not sure it was, I, I'm still you maybe chewing. Maybe you got some coffee, you come not through, even. and then uh, you, uh, well, half a cup, and then you get to come back and sit back and. Half a sip is now what it here. feels like, yeah. No, that was, uh, that was absolute domination. I mean, the aggressive tactic absolutely paid off. In hindsight, it's 2020. I mean, I see what SSG were trying to do, but couldn't execute and uh, relied a lot oh, on the Kinesa. No. That Tyra and that Eevee did a lot of work that I think they didn't yeah. expect to come out and just swing for the fences like that. I mean, I think that was just pure home runs. And, well, hey, if you only have, what, six minutes, maybe seven minutes of game time, you don't really get the option to see that many huge damage numbers. I think a person who was making a lot of plays, though, and actually one that I think made a big difference was Rhino, who pretty much locked down Sadak and Rajao anytime they tried to get too far ahead. Ten and one. I mean, this is just a standout performance for him. Dominant and confident the way that he was playing this one. And uh, you can tell that uh, he just he has it locked in. Um, and this is something that's scary. If Kanga and Rhino can do this consistently, this level of Atlas play, I mean, they're going to they're gonna rise in the ranks, baby. And, and this is something that I think Hades has to be happy to see. Joel's as well, 4-1 and one on the con, just holds the, holds the angles nice enough. And what they, they test is you've got defense, we've got offense. Do you have enough defense for our offense and where they catch SSG in a pickle is that SSG kind of go midway between that conversation. They don't get a Dombo with their Nando Barrack. That might have changed things. Might have sustained them a little more. They go offensive with the Genos but then the Nando Barrack is a little more defensive. The aggro composition all end with good support, good movement speed from Kanga and the Eevee, it was too unstoppable. There was This was not fair. This was a fight that was lost in the draft. We just didn't know it. Some of those shots were almost just too good, and I don't know how else to describe them other than just ridiculous. Like, the fact that he was able to find the aim, the connections that he was, specifically onto champions like Eevee, but just onto everybody, made such a big difference. As we're going to Jaguar Falls here. Jaguar yeah, This could be... Fool. A pretty big one, I think, overall, just because of, well, again, the differences it can make on a map. Everyone knows this one, much like Frog Isle. But if you're coming into it, I mean, fresh off a nice win like that for Kanga, uh, you know the draft style you're going for. I feel like this is actually a benefit to SSG, and that's why they chose this map. And they also chose second pick, which is interesting. They're in the driver's seat for pick and map. They're choosing second, which means they chose that. And they chose this map to get back on the regular pace of games. They've won three games, um, but they've taken the majority of their wins on standard maps aside from their first pick, Ascension Peak. Stonekeep, Bright Marsh. You look at that, that's like, that's standard Paladins right there. We see that all the time, anywhere you go. You see uh, Shattered Desert, Frog Isle. Frog Isle, the only one that kind of is uh, normal, but it's known for being a normal niche map where snipers and the way you play is very different. Um, I think that Kanga is showing, again, their specialization in some of these maps that not a lot of teams feel very comfortable on or at least can get caught out in. And that that is, again, playing to Kanga's strength as it always has. Well, Makoa Torvald banned out as always. And SSG opting to leave open Khan and Genos for this one mm. as the Cassie ban came out from Kanga very early on, which I think is kind of telling as to what they consider to be the big threat. Yeah. 
And even though they weren't highly prioritizing it, you know, about a week ago, and even sometimes today it hasn't really been as high on their radar, they do come through. They, they grab the their right first thing. big Genos, and admittedly, with the way they played last map, I think it's just going to make them look even stronger. Absolutely. I mean, and what was so great about that draft last map, when I think about it, is Kanga positioned themselves for three top tier picks in the Con, Atlas, and the Eevee to do yes. the, the role that were all synergistic with one another. Genos would have been great slotting in for the Eevee as well. You could have maybe had a different, but that is such a big three picks for this team in this set. And now they set it up to where, okay, you can Four get Con, we'll get the Genos. But they're not locking themselves out of the Genos with that ban and giving the Con over uh, simply uh, by default. And uh, I like this. Ash and Khan, two aggressive tanks. It's SSG's turn to take the aggressiveness in this one. And uh, on Jaguar Falls, they're just going to need the right team to support them. You know, this doesn't happen often, but every single map we've played so far, Eevee has been picked up and has been Top played. Two, right? And oh. it's so weird to see that. That's yeah. just a general rule of thumb. Normally, she's not picked up that often. Yeah. But then the follow-up is... Does anyone grab her for Jag Falls? Like, this is not a map that she is known to be strong on. And well, admittedly, when it comes to flanks, like, flanks on this map, in my mind, that come to mind are Zen, Artalis. Absolutely. I mean, if you're going really far out there, I don't think he's available for the play right now. But Lex, like, it's just Rock like, played, uh, there's so Andrew. many odd picks that are not check. your Dash not your Eevee. Check. I mean, you and may see an Androxus come out here. Check. One of the things that uh, I think we saw actually have maybe a little bit of a, um, a you know, an effect against the pip is the Andro. Up. And that is something that FRZ got has in his back pocket. It's it's a it's like a it's like a zipped up back pocket. Like that you don't even see is there. He's got a you know one of those cargo pants that have way too many pockets and just it's like you just only get <laughs> a few. Like a pocket within a pocket. It's a pocket within a pocket, he's hell. got that. And the way that they Tyra right now tells me they don't want to deal with any double damage amp. They respect Chronix, who might now shift onto the uh, the shot lane. Uh, but it also means the SSG are saving this spot for FRZ God. What does he feel is going to put them over the edge? You're not you're not horrible with the Drogos here either. And I think a Bomb King can compete very nicely. And they're seeing a lot of shields that can be melted on right now if they go bear uh, Fernando. Really, tank power shifts towards SSG if they pick a Fernando right here. But there's the Vivian, and wow, this is interesting. I'm not sure Andro fits better against this, this comp team. now. It is like a Vivian team, and that shield, is it's it's a little tougher to go against as yeah. a flank. Especially because a lot of the cards she likes to run. The one that's most notable is once that shield comes up, even if you hit her, most of the time people players will have at least one, two points in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, hey, that damage went to my shield instead, even mm -hmm. though you didn't hit it. So you have to play around this carefully. So Andrew can't just go to the other side. I mean, it gets... It, it depends on the player. Let's put it that loadout, way. Yeah. It depends on the player, because she's very... She's got to be in line of sight. Andrew can hide, dash, shoot, right? He True. can get in the air. But I think Don't they're worry, right for this. SSG After picking the BK, matches, which is the other, I think, way. pretty good option is... You know, just so much more consistent. It's so good against shields. It's great against spacing people out. Um, I think it's overall better. But they gotta gotta watch out for this pit man. He can abuse this Tyra if she's in a bad spot. I can already hear Nick saying Bomb King. You know, on probably one of his best maps, if not his best map. What Nick would argue is his best map, and I'd I'd be inclined to agree. Definitely is. Tenth overall in the draft comes in at the very last. Yeah. But it's going to be this pip, I think, that kind of catches everyone's eyes. Bomb King is proven to be good on this. Freeze God has been proven to be good on Bomb King. Yeah. So we're going to have to see, presumably, Evil Eye on this pip and how exactly he's got a big task. He's going to make it work because Evil Mojo can do a lot of work. Oh, it sure can. I mean, they made Paladin, so of course they know how to do oh, a lot sure. of work. Maybe is that maybe that's why the ultimate like it has to come up <laughs> as often as it does. We'll have that's to find out. That's why it's so good. That's why it's so good. As Kanga come through, they're looking to tie this one up on SSG's map pick. The only way to find out if they can do it is to go down to the casters and have them break it down. Man, oh man, has set number one started to live up to the hype. It was looking like SSG were going to run away with it. But one of the faster frog aisles we've seen pulls it back for Kanga. 3-2. They need to win two more starting here. Of course, Bomb King getting picked 10th is, is what they kind of raised their eyebrows at. But I'm excited to see actually... Interestingly enough, how Chronix, not Evil Eye, is going to play on this pip. Only a couple teams have, oh, wow. have, have kind of gone the pip route. Now we get to see how Kanga dipped their toes into that water. What are you looking out for here 
uh, in game number six? I think it's just being able to feel confident on this pick. A lot of what I think NIP does well with it on this map is pair it with the frontliners and get in people's faces, use Moxie, use that big AoE burst healing, especially in the early game, to the best of its ability to control and be where you want to be and go where you want to go and win those fights. Haven't really seen a lot of that yet. I think they have a, a lot of walk you down ability, especially with Vivian as well. And they're going to have to just confidently get in someone's face, kind of like this. <laughs> Look at exactly that. The healer is the first target now for Kanga. Chronix is going to be the one to find it. Just firing away is Evil Eye here on Vivian. Gets a little chunk damage back in onto him. Sadak is so low, though. The shoulder bash is going to take him out, but right into the waiting arms of Jules there. Chronic with a couple Ares down as well. And the pip is answering the question marks we had. 90% for Kanga. That's going to be point number one. And they have not skipped a beat. They've carried on the momentum from Frog Isle. Three, two, for the pip and for the barrack up to this point. That's the aggressiveness I think you were looking for. Absolutely. SSG have drafted an incredible front line here again with the Khan Ash. But the thing they're missing is necessarily a lot of comfort here in the back line. I don't think Ares is played a ton of this Tyra. I don't think they really played the Tyra style quite as well as Kanga did, you know what I mean? This feels like it's going to be a race to see who can be more yeah. aggressive. Both yeah. of the both of these comps feel like they want to do the same thing. And it almost has seemed that way the entire set is, is the team who's able to get out first and throw the first punch kind of staggers yeah. out the enemy team. I mean, both literally in respawn speaking, but as well as just sort of momentum-wise, the, the first punch oftentimes has dictated the game with the exception of a few. This one, again, being sort of an exception as Kanga had a first point cap, but now are way back in their base. Space Station trying to dig their feet in here on the defensive end and try to stop them from even breaking free of their base. The King Bomb's ready. The first round of ultimates starting to be ready as well. Crossfire was used there. Uh, from Space Station, found some kills here. And this is what this is what's going to determine it, these in-the-trench <laughs> battles. I love it. I mean, Fernando and Vivian versus Ash and uh, Bomb King. Ash and Bomb King are going to take this round. But this is going to be a really fun game to watch because it's going to be excited. a lot of this. Full speed, running into each other, head-on, 80-mile-an-hour car crash, and somebody's going to walk away from it. Whether it's Space Station or whether it's Kanga, I really have no idea. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's hard. It, it, on paper, you would go a space station in this matchup, but Kanga have shown today that they can come out, they can play aggressively, and they can take the game to anyone. Hades, their coach, has always said, you know, any day anyone can beat anyone. You can tell this team lives by that mindset, and they're showing us they beat VP. They're having a great set here against Space Station Gaming. They're winning some fights down here. They're getting back to the payload. They're going to have 26 seconds left, one of the short maps, so this one could round the corner here. I'd love, yeah, I'd love to see Chronix pair with this Vivian Fernando a little bit more. I think that's what I've seen from NIP that I really just kind of watched and loved is they make this like three-man little death squad between Diggy and Tenor uh, and usually somebody else who can try and keep up with that damage. That's really what I want to see here from Kanga. I think you win that little Ash versus Bomb King matchup every single time if you have a pit burst yep. healing you and getting you through that. And I think Genos and Barrack is such a good combination on its own that so it low should be able to stand its ground without much help. Look how low these red health bars are. He needs to hit some shots here. He's unable to do so. The rest of the blue health bars are a little bit lower than Space Stations. And they're going to stall out this defense. Overtime goes down 1-1 one to one here on Jaguar Falls. This is immediately looking more contended. Uh, then Frog Isle did. Sort of a mixed a mixed bag there from the pip to start off. Chronix roaring out of the gate with three kills, two for Barrick. But Space Station found an answer for it. The, the presence in the Kanga base there to start off the defense was just too much to break through. These are both great lineups, but uh, again, I think it's going to come down to who, who sets the pace of the fight, who comes out with the end strikes first. And Space Station has done a better job of that so far this set, which is, is what worries me a little bit as a Kanga fan. I think they really need to kick it into gear here and not be afraid. And I think Evil Mojo lends itself very well to that. I also think Immortal is, you know, obviously the greatest turnaround defensive ultimate in the game to be able to take that, you know, King Bomb on the face, yep. take something like that and survive and turn it around. This has really been the battle of the blaster pairing with the tank at this point. Chronix has sort of been uh, a, a solo player up, up until this point on the, the pip with his self-healing. That's not too surprising to see. So setting the pace right now. Wow, I was going to say a space station, but that's a double through time in space. That flips this fight 
right back around. Only three members left alive for Space Station. The Dread Serpent gets a good fear in there, but not any follow-up at the moment, though. Gera plugs away, and he flipped that fight right around. That could have gone Space Station's way, but the through time and space pulls it right back. Man, I can't believe they weren't able to... Take down Sadat oh, he gets there. Out. Another King Bomb comes in into the Dome Show. You can see Barrick trying to prepare for it. He tried to. He's able to just prolong his life just a little bit, but he's still going to fall down. The Sentinel's plugging away damage as well, but he's the only one in a position right now to contend. They're, they're fine right now just to back off. 36%, no fast cap for Space Station, 45% in climbing for them. So they have plenty of time on the Kanga side to get back in here. All ultimates, all 10 used in that fight. So this is back to just good old baseline paladins. Who can position? Who can bring the aggression with their normal kit? But right now, it's Space Station who are on the point with 93%. Joel's going down as well. That's tough for Kanga. Just exploded control, knockups, knockbacks, all types of things and tools used here by SSG. And they are able to grab this payload. One little adjustment. This is a very, very hindsight 2020. No way you could have known this, but that uh, that immortal off of the Dread Serpent, that Dread Serpent feared both of uh, the other two squishier targets kind of out of line of sight of follow-up. And so Rhino was really the only one in danger there. And he pops his immortal there to try and save everyone's life, but everyone was pretty much full health Ooh. through the immortal. If he had the immortal for that King Bomb take back attempt there from SSG, that might have been a way out for Kanga, but again, that's very, very hindsight. No way he could have known that's right. how it's, you know, he's not Doctor Strange. He has not seen all the outcomes. <laughs> We've seen this fight 15 million times, and the Immortal wins it just one when used in the right way. Now Kanga looking eerily similar to Space Station, starting a little slower on the defense, uh, but now have Space Station firmly pushed back here. Evil Eye starting to come alive a little bit on the Vivian. Had Sort of a quiet start to this game. He's done some good damage. Hasn't quite found the kills uh, with Chronic. Shoulder Bash is going to get aggressive here. Joel's, though, finds the first kill. It's a one for one. This is just to get back to the payload right now. And I think Kanga will be OK just to waste a little time here in the middle. I mean, a minute left. You're going to have to win a few fights here for if you're Space Station to get back to your payload. Yeah, I mean, SSG did this to them last round, so it's only fair that <laughs> Kanga get a swing for back. Tat, right. A lot of kills coming through for Space Station, though. They're going to be able to transition this. Look at this. Ash was already on the payload, so they're going to get a lot of push distance off of this. Let's take a quick peek at the items here and see who's getting what online. It should be relatively close to equalize, as both teams have taken a payload themselves. Both teams have had a full round to sort of attack and defend. And things like cauterized resiliences are going to be very yep, important for resales. shutting down. And uh, Brazil has... Again, it's super, super good, and it may have taken that price reduction for people to realize it, but pretty much everyone is picking it up nowadays. Five, eight out of the entire game, but all five for Kanga. That's going to be the Dome Shield. Here comes the King Bomb, rolls through, finds Jules in a bit of a precarious spot, but the Bowling Ball keeps him alive. The Shielding just adds a little bit of distance to his lifespan here, though. Two kills for Space Station, and this payload is getting close to going through. It's going to go through. It's going to be 3-1. Set point now for Space Station. Kanga came out firing, but Space Station answered back and now one point away from taking our first set of this Thursday. A big thing that I I think SSG do well there is, or I guess I should say one person from SSG do well there, is I feel like Sadak so many times just slipping away with little to no HP. So receiving so much attention, so much focus, and being able to just mitigate it all was crazy. And those are both nice. double chicken fries, I think, <laughs> there. Go ahead and hop over to Burger King and get my spicy chicken here. Don't Doesn't Burger King have chicken spicy, fries? Spicy chicken fries, yeah. yeah. Wild, dude. Five, crazy, like four, I almost planned that or something. Three, two, oh, no, I, I thought you said one. chicken nuggets, so I, I was doubling down on the chicken fry. It's almost like you knew <laughs> what you were talking about, and I just didn't. Ten resiliences now, though. For we'll get there. Teams. We'll get there one of these Our days. fast food synergy right now. We had the uh, the SpongeBob synergy earlier yeah. over powers. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the problem is, dude, that's one of my favorite quotes of all time from any piece of content, of cinema, film, whatever it right. is. You know? Wow. I think I think Space Station had this one figured out here. Mm-hmm. Kanga. They almost didn't stand a chance there. It's almost too much to keep up with. Space Station run rampant through the Kanga lineup. Now hold the point. Could win this one to win the first set. Who throws the first punch? I think SSG have just been a little bit better at doing that today and have a very brawly composition. So do Kanga. 
The Pip is new for them. The Vivian's a little bit new for them. Immortal is their last chance to get in on this objective. Can they get her done? Oh, unfortunately, Joel's falls, Chronix falls, Rhino falls, and that's going to be it. Space Station are going to win game number six and win set number one after these last few fall overtime ticking away here. That's going to do it. Hats off to Space Station. Hats off to Kanga. They played really well today. It's sort of been the theme. They play so well. Mm -hmm. Just come short against some of these top teams. Space Station snagged the win. I hope I didn't say anything too doubtful against Space Station because whatever meme video they throw together. Uh, you don't want to be in it. Yeah, you're gonna. they're going to slow your voice down right at the beginning and then the montage will, will roll through in this case. Looking a little sad over on the Kanga side, but they fought hard today. Set number one is in the books. Send it back to the desk. Now I'm honestly really just hoping that uh, Dave is going to get the slow-mo version of him saying they just throw it at the beginning of the montage and slow it and down. And slow it And then down. it begins the montage as they come through. It takes six maps, but they are able to get there. Kanga looked actually really, really solid at the beginning. That pip came out swinging for the fences. Yeah. And then it just kind of fell apart. Like, the defense was <clears throat> close overall. That's... And then I think exactly what Nick said towards the very end, which was just whoever throws the first punch... Yeah, I mean, you, you, you uh, if you don't use them, you often lose them. And I think uh, when it refers to ultimates, it also sometimes can refer to the grand scheme of games. And yeah. that was one where the people who kind of struck first uh, ended up taking the, the lion's share of the prize, which in Paladins is just the set. It was one of those interesting switch-ups that I thought worked out pretty nicely in the pip and the Evil Eye uh, switch up, where usually Evil Eye will play the Blaster and, yeah. uh, and Chronix will be on the Vivian type character, but um, it just was hard to sustain. Ares, great game from him. Rachel and Sadak showing that the aggro kind of style of tank as a unit not needing a point tank still works. And FRZ God, I mean, the man knows how to play <laughs> Bomb King. 14 and 4, what can you say? Uh, it's kind of all in the stats right there. The man, the myth, the legend. Right behind him at 10-3 and three was Richal as well. So both of these players, I think, having a huge impact. And you can see Resilience became probably one of the biggest items for him. And, well, once uh, I'd say Evil Mojo isn't hitting as hard, once you're able to right. kind of set yourself up. Like, these bombs they do a little bit more damage than I think a lot of people expect off the nose, especially on someone who might have a Tyra Mark on them. And so all of a sudden, you're just, well, I guess literally blowing them up. And I think people are learning the value of Tyra, and it's depending on the, the flexibility is what map can you bring it out on, how consistent can you be against what compositions, even if they kind of hurt you a little bit. There was not enough dive except the pip when that stopped being effective against the Tyra, and she was able to run rampant. The Hunter's Mark gained value. FRC got rotated. Great BK pickup uh, like we saw. The thing that I love about SSG's performance, to take nothing away from Kanga, is we had qu questions about Richao starting the day, whether he can play on the aggro tanks like Atlas and, and Khan and yeah. give flexibility to his team and not have to have a Barakanara. He answered that question. We asked, can FRZ God kind of play to that extreme standard, get back in his ways? He answered that question. And most importantly, we asked about Ares. Can Ares show up and give you good performances, maybe a little bit better than his opposition on the other side? And he absolutely answered that. Uh, an emphatic yes from them. And an emphatic week of growth so far from SSG. Yeah. I cannot wait to see them play uh, tomorrow. And that's going to be the big thing right now, right? This was coming into this match. SSG were the favored team. Kanga was actually looking surprisingly good coming out of it. I think being able to hold up, they looked exactly the way everyone expected coming into today. Tomorrow, yeah. I think, is going to answer a lot more questions for both of these teams. Because I believe Kanga is going to end up going against the Knights, who are about to go see against Na'Vi. And SSG are going up against Na'Vi, which is probably going to be one of... Uh, it's either going to be one of the top tier matches or it's going to be kind of one of those ones that flows the way Navi <laughs> tends to make flows. it flow. But that's either a, way, that's a nice word. they can at least come out For of sweep. it. For sweep. For sweep. It's a nice way to say the The set flowed really well. Yeah, it flowed really well into that 4-0 column. Either way, you could look through and just be happy right now. SSG find themselves a 4-2. It's a great start to the week. They'll have to see if they can keep it up. But right now, we can see how they're feeling right after that as we jump down to the post-game interview with some of the players. Thank you, gentlemen, and congratulations, first of all, boys. But before we get to the good, I kind of want to start with the bad. What happened on that Frog Isle game? Do you guys feel like you just kind of got outdrafted a little bit? We don't talk about Frog Isle. No? We're going to no. blaze over that one? We don't talk about that map. No. Fair enough. Never happened. Never happened. Fair enough. Never I don't remember happened. it either. Um, saw a lot of Shaolin today. What, what do you think the reasons for that might have been? Uh, Shai is a really solid pick. Overall, he, 
he provides a lot of good damage, so it's just another good middle range damage. It's gotcha. preference. Did you think that was going to be as confident as it was against Kanga today? I think you guys came out and really gave them a pretty uh, swift beating on some of those maps. Yeah, it was like a really good match, and Kanga is getting stronger every, every single match. It's a really good team, and I think they're improving a lot. So we could take it, so it was fine. It was good. I know that uh, right when she was released, Imani, you guys weren't the biggest fans of her, but she saw some good play today. Do you do you smile at her? A little, do you like her a little bit more now? It's more like I wanted her to be in my team rather than face her. So <laughs> it's that, basically that. I hate her still. <laughs> it's not good. Nerf her. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might just get your wish one of these days, guys. Congratulations. Uh, on the victory, we got another great set coming up for you guys. After the break, we will be watching Navi versus the Knights. To you by Evil Mojo, High Res Studios, INAP, Respawn, Steel Series, Alienware, and Skillshot. <laughs> 